Welcome to the PI Podcast, Political Insights for the Palaging Inis. I'm your host, Matt, and with me is my co-host, political scientist, meme lord, and deworn Maltese Pekingese, Borge. <laughs> <laughs> How is that related? With the... Did you just see a dog earlier on and you just remembered it? <laughs> right, maybe. But hey. also similar personalities. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is, is, is that the uglier version of a poodle? Of a toy poodle? It's a, to- it's a toy dog, yes. Okay, I mean, I'm going to ask you <laughs> okay, 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 okay. To those who are only picking me, sorry about that. Pia nyo, pia nating lahat to board you at your service. Yes, and uh, this is a special history month uh, edition of the PI podcast. And Ooh. actually, you know, there's a lot going on history-wise, and yeah. I think, um, well, we we have our guests to hopefully react a bit to uh, these patterns. But of course, um, there's this thing called, well, historical distortions. We've just talked about this before, but um, and of course, the recent and we had a discussion before about Made in Malacanang, which has since become that one of the highest-grossing films of. Uh, Recent memory, actually, since the pandemic <laughs> opened. So, uh, we, I mean, we analyzed the content, but what can you say about, again, the, uh, this new aftermath of this? And, of course, the general attitude towards, you know, history or dramatization of mm. history, Borge? Yeah, yeah, I think it, uh, this one, uh, for the past few weeks, I think the more recent events, more recent cultural artifacts and uh, whatever being, being done for the past few years as well. Uh, I think brings forth the necessity of studying propaganda as this without, you know, uh, it's easy to say propaganda. It's easy to dub things as propaganda. Uh, It had taken on a pejorative, you know, a pejorative interpretation. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think for us, uh, for our episode right now, I think we are trying to rehabilitate, you know, to to clarify the concept of propaganda itself. This time Mm -hmm. uh, in relation to history, which had been, again, it's history month and of course, History had played, uh, not really played, but that is intimately tied with propaganda itself. Mm-hmm. So that is something that we would explore with Mike for tonight. So yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, and actually, you know, it's very difficult to uh, really define it or to clarify it because and people use it all the time, you know, mm. but and mostly to their political opponents. Mm. But in reality, you know, they're all propaganda. Sometimes one man's views are history is another man's propaganda so in a way we can hope to try and come up with practical tips on how to handle propaganda and how to identify propaganda perhaps uh, even if it is propaganda maybe some are more propagandistic than others and i think this won't be of course the last time that we're going to talk about this but at least now we're going to focus on the intersections and interactions between propaganda and history and of course we have our special guest who you've all known before. We've had him in the podcast several times, uh, but, and, but we, we trust him now again to enlighten us once more with his uh, expertise you know, as, a, as a historian and history buff. So of course, he is a social science teacher at St. Scholastica's Manila um, and of, a, well, of course behind Project Sai Sai, which is a group that creates history content in Facebook. And a, of course, card-carrying mem- uh, historian, you know. Um, National Historical Association. So please give a PI welcome once again to Mike Tabuyan. Welcome back, Mike, on the PI podcast. Hello, Matt. Um, uh, I'm Tony. So I'm happy to be for the for the third time. Mm-hmm. So third time is a charm. Time, I think. <laughs> Yes, and of course, we have a special perks, you know. Yes. <laughs> Sabi ko may planner or something, you know. <laughs> sa ano, sa, ilalamove ko na lang. <laughs> anyway, pwede, so, pwede. Oh, oh, Mike, so, as well, of course, as historian or, you know, in, within the network of historians in the country, uh, I'm sure you've talked to your fellow historians on the state of history. Maybe you can give us in, uh, a brief summary of what is the feeling now and what the attitude towards history in our country right now, especially with of course, we discussed about historical distortions and the made in Malacanang. So, do you have anything to say regards to the current situation on history? Siguro, ano, being familiar with some of the major circles, no, sa Philippine historiography community. Um, bardagulan yung nangyari, no, kasi oh. um, bardagulan yung nangyari din in a way na 
merong uh, mga parinigan nagaganap no mga Ay, pasimpleng wow. pitikan yes mm. no uh, on, on different uh on, well, pa- factionalized na community no uh, mainly some ay dahil siguro sa mga political agenda nila no mm-hmm. yung iba ay out of their ideological perspectives maybe uh, lalo yung mga nasa nativist uh, movements no mm. so uh, ang ang hirap magdebra by the way no? uh, some some uh, some those some of those are involved with our big names indeed no and mm. yung iba they active din no doon sa mga nang mga mga, mga diskurso ngayon sa social media no so for instance is wala yung this uh, history stress please diba yes um you can see some historians no uh, usually identify to a particular faction ang hirap mag ang hirap mag name drop sorry uh, <laughs> yeah well from, from uh, the consequences of being a fry diba small fry in the in the cf in the cf scholars no uh yung isang faction ina affirm nila na chismis ang kasaysayan because oh. hmm. based on oral histo- uh, Philippine historiography is based also on oral history no yung mga hmm. ganung mga ano mga mga ganung uh, I don't know kung tamang tawagin na stretching or conceptual stretch pero mm-hmm. pwede siguro no and even no uh, they are also uh, upholding the no, the Marcos ng propaganda yung ibang mga hmm. talagang ng ano na sobrang kayagan na kumbaga no hmm. so either that's one and right. then on the other hand ando naman yung mga anti-dictatorial ang um, um, perspectives no on the issue na nakita nila na it's a form of invalidation to, toward the profession mm-hmm. in a form of um spreading false uh, perspectives about the about the discipline in itself mm-hmm. so yung nagiging high na emotions no? well, uh, as we as we all know yung parinig ni Shao Chua sa kan ni Daryl Yap no mm-hmm. uh, Nija talagang nagulat talaga ako na sa dami-dami na nagre-react na against kay Daryl Yap. Talaga nga si Shaw yung ano si Shaw yung ah uh, kung kung tama man yung term na gagamitin ko. Mm. So sa ngayon parang nag-die down na yung ano, nag-die down na yung yung height no. Mm. Pero meron din ilang mga sumusundot-sundot tang pauutay-utay no. Mm. Uh, doon sa nangyari. Yes. Nevertheless, no. Siguro well, based dun sa napuntahan ko ano, at General Assembly ng Local Historical Committee Network sa Cebu last yes. February, which is, say, di ko rin malamang kadahilan na narendag kami because we had um, Amrito Campo as our, as our keynote speaker, by the way. So, mm. coincidentally, siya din kasi, sa kanyang term din kasi na pirma na NHP Charter which created the LHCN2. Mm. So, at the consensus there sa Cebu is, nandun din yung concern, no? sa no doon sa historical distortion no yung false notion that history is chismis mm-hmm. and hmm. kaya din nag uh, well i don't know kung implicit or in it, it, it implicit no in a way mm-hmm. na doon sa ginawang Cebu uh, Cebu agenda namin or Cebu, sa Cebu platform mm-hmm. uh, sa, sa Cebu framework of uh, historical development kung tawagin namin mm-hmm. for 2022 up to 2027 mm-hmm. uh, naka uh, aka emphasize din doon yung pag yung pag uh, yung pag promote no ng mga iba't ibang local historical organizations ng tamang historiographical method mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. Yeah. and as well pagpapalakas din ng ano ng mga kasaysayan lokal yes. kasi usually uh, yung the, the local especially after nung keynote address ni Dr. Ni, ni Sir Ambet no doon talaga nakita na even historical distortion happens on the local communities mm. no mm. uh to be specific okay uh, he used maybe his, his own experience no doon sa sa Kalanchao code no which mm. they declared as fraudulent mm. and ended the uh, and made him ended up uh, persona non grata sa clan oh talagang <laughs> ebidensya uh, na fraudulent talaga siya do. Hmm. Kaya din tinanggal yung order of Kalanchao eh, as a state decoration. Hmm. Dinisolve din siya because sabi ng NHP no time ni na Sir Ambet, peke talaga. Hmm. Then niya nung nga daw para napagkwentuhan pa na yung Kalanchao daw para sa hukin sa salitang balbal ng hukin eh para siyang low job. Sorry, sorry. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> Wait, Sam, so, Kalanchao is <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so, bigla din ako eh. Pero parang, wow, kalansyao. So, <laughs> ganun ka, no? Pero, wow, well, kalansyao. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm just learning that in, in these Chinese students in Ateneo na nagtawanan daw yung mga Chinese na klaran sa estudyante niya oh. about hearing the word kalansyao. So, nung so, nakurir, nung nagsaka siya, bakit? Yung pala, yun ang yun, yun, parang katunog niya, no? Okay. Uh, so, ano, to kiss one's, uh, <laughs> kiss one's balls. Parang ganun. Hmm. So, imagine, di ba? Right. So, doon talaga pinakita na talaga, talaga may, may, may problema talaga toward this year na mm-hmm. maybe na magnify now because of social media. Mm-hmm. So, dagdag pa natin dyan na yung pagtingin din na may storyador na ang kasaysayan ay maaaring uh, naka, maaaring may, 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 may sable siya towards chismis. Mm-hmm. Pero the difference is that sa kasaysayan kasi systematic yung method sa pag-aaral. Mm-hmm. Hindi nga hindi yung pagkagaya ni chismis na unverified talaga siya. Sa kasaysayan kasi kinakailangan i-verify mo muna eh. Mm-hmm. Kahit na natin na uh, merong uh, the, the, the inter- yung pagsa- pagsasaysay nung event is merong mm-hmm. by bias linis for example which is mm-hmm. uh, on us on our profession mahirap talaga matanggal alam 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 natin pare-pareho yan yeah. nevertheless yes. uh, merong pinagbabatay ang mga set of facts no? may pinagbabatay ang mm-hmm. mga dokumento Uh-oh. may pinagbabatay ang mga do- iba't ibang documentations and although yes may, uh, oral history is also pa- uh, considered as a component no Of, uh, or, 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 or a historiographical resource. Right. Pero kasi uh, kinakailangan mo din kasi padaanin sa masusing um, proseso ng cross-checking sa iba't ibang mga sources mm-hmm. yung, ano, yung, yung mga nakukuha mga datos. Mm-hmm. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang talaga siya pwedeng basa, basa ka lang maniwala ng sinabi ng ganito. Ganyan kasi <laughs> sa babaybay nila ng mga or- origins sa pangalan ng mga bayan, ganun yung story na may yes. ikat nila, dumating sa gantong bayan, nagtanong ng pangalan, na, may, na mali nang intindi yung, yung, ano, yung local, ganito yung sinabi, mm-hmm. akala mm-hmm. nila yun yung pangalan. So yun, parang gano'n, di ba? Mm-hmm. And that's where also yung role ng, ng historiography comes in. Na talagang right. matinding fact-checking, may matinding verification, and natat- natatawa na lang din ako, may mga historiador na irta sa ID na fact-checking. Parang, ha? Huh? Di ba? Kasi napaka-elit daw, which is I, I don't believe that uh, that it's elitist because we as, uh, as a community of scholars are really, are also um, upholding, no? Mm. Yung consistency ng, ano, ng ating mga na ating makinukuha mga datos. Ika nga natin sa scientific method. Pero well, maybe the, some of those who say that are also motivated by their own methodological and epistemological mm. biases. So, we mm, can begin yes. na uh, bibigaya, ganun yung pagtigil nila. Yeah. So, uh, well, I think this discourse is, will, will still be continuing uh, <laughs> in the next six years. No? Uh, long, long debate na makikita natin sporad sa so, yeah. support pero nandiyan ano. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, Bardagulan. Oh, God. I mean, I mean, I'm of usually the opinion that Bardagulan can be a sign of healthy community because it there's means there's disagreement. Mm. And out of disagreement, you can forward each other's opinions and have them improve based on actual debate. No? You adjust and maybe create a consensus. But in this case, as based on what you've said, sometimes you're saying there might be like there's some partisan historians that actually affirm false histories, mga ganyan, no? And even with, they use epistemological arguments with regards to chismis, who some argue that, yes, it uh, it deals with, uh, the history does deal with chismis sometimes. It can also become history, but it does not, how you say, it is not automatically history. Is that what you're saying? Or, like, what is really the relation maybe succinctly what is the relationship in history and chismis the simplest way possible for our listeners ano ba talaga ang chismis well, uh, at, his, at kasaysayan oh. alam naman natin siguro na it was quite misquoted no, from from Lourdes de Vera's uh, oh. TV show sa TV5 mm-hmm. which is uh, history with Lourdes no, chismis no, kasaysayan noon and yes I'm also a fan of that show yes and 2018 ano, PHA conference of which I took part as a, as a presenter aha uh-huh. uh, plenary speaker sila eh, si mm. Stewart. Mm. So, ang sabi ni, ano, well, I, I think if not si Stewart ang, ang nagkwento, mm. parang si, I, I forgot kung si Sir Shaw Chua ang nagkwento, pero nevertheless, kasama si Sir Shaw sa conceptualization doon, kasi ang kwento, eh, nagiinom sila sa Saras, sa UP Diliman. Mm-hmm. And out of nowhere, eh, biglan nilang naisip na uh, bumuo ng TV show, catering mm. to that. So yes. what we are what we are discussing is that 
yung mga rumors in Philippine history of which they uh, they are verifying kung totoo nga ba siya o hindi or merong ah mm-hmm. uh, merong konting green fruit no ika nga nila so maaring na ano yun na miscount yun no ng mga okay. tao kasi akala nila dahil tagline niya show yun that's that's mm-hmm. the perspective and para et kita naman natin yung mis- misperception na yun kasi si Ella Cruz din sila sabi no? mm-hmm. so ano nga ba yung relasyon ng kasi sa kanila ng cheese base well Uh, any scholar, no? maybe on the, on the field of, his, of history, maybe, just din just, just nagsisimula na sa starting point ng pag-aaral, no? which is yung mga chismis din, no? yung mga yung mga, mga kwento-kwento na naririnig sa mga matanda, no? yung mga mm. kwento-kwento na, na naipapasa from generation to generation, and then, mm-hmm. uh, siyempre, trabaho na historiador, kung tatalong talagang totoo to, tignan natin kung may mga documentation sa nagpapatunay nito. So that's mm. where now uh this is end and history begins kasi mm. doon ka na titimbang doon ka na magngangalap ng materials doon ka na rin mangangalap mm. ng mga ng mga iba't ibang mga sources whether primary or secondary that can answer right. uh, that can verify the chismis kaya mm. kaya kaya therefore history ceases to be a chismis but mm. on the moment na inisip na ng historiador na Uh, i-verify yung lahat ng mga datos na meron siya. So, one, yes. one example, maybe, no? na ito, itong mga nakal, ito, simula nung viernes ng gabi, eh, mm. ano ako, uh, kin- kinocompile ko lahat nung ano, kinocompile ko yung lahat ng news clippings about sa muntin lupa na nakita ko sa National uh-huh. Library of Australia. Hmm. So, uh, karamihan, na, ito yung pinaka natatawa kasi hindi din siya ganoong natouch no? ng existing literature. sa bilis sa pag uh, sa kasaysayan hmm. ng mundo no and although na, na ano uh, at the same time meron siyang na, na, na debunk at, at uh, na debunk na kwento-kwento rin dito sa local uh-huh. sa Bilibid kasi uh, karamihan ng documentations about sa ng about sa Muntinlupa noong ka, ng pre-war ng pre-war period hmm. na nasa Tribune na nasa uh, NLA is mostly about sa paggawa ng Bilibid no mm-hmm. Yung, discussion sa pagbibenta ng lupa ng mm. City Government of Manila mm. ang sa pagbuo dito no kasi makita mo talaga na na nag-aalangan ang mga na umaayaw yung mga tao na ilipat dito kasi mawawala sila ng lupa <laughs> at the same time yung City Government of Manila kaya dahil kailangan, kailangan nila ng pera para ipatayo yung present day Manila City Hall mm. so they have to sell the land so may ganung push for them talaga so mm-hmm. ano yung nadibang sa ano yung chismis na nadibang sa ano sa akin on that on that on those findings kasi kwento-kwento dito sa sa sa, sa Bilibid no na itong Bilibid ay originally land ng Madrigal. Mm. Uh, well considering na merong uh, merong pwedeng pagbatayan ng chismis considering na itong na, na sweet sandwich between the old uh, between the Madrigal estate mm. which is uh, the, the present day Ayala Alabang on our top Mm. and below us south is yung Sun Heights no uh-huh. kaya sa Sun Heights eh, sa Sun Madrigal yung yes. asawa dito presente so mm. yun yun talaga yung kwento dito na na even nung nag uh, nag field work kami nag interview kami ng mga matanda mm. for uh, research methods class uh, four years ago too so yun din ang sinasabi ng mga matanda na may yun, yun yung yun yung ikwento sa kanila ng mga tatay nila ng mga mm. ng mga predecessors nila kaso kung consistent dun sa balita na talagang pag-aari siya ng City Government of Manila. Uh-huh. So, therefore, ano yung paniniwalaan natin? Diba? Yung kwento, yung dokumento. And talagang, talagang binanggit talaga dun yung entirety process no, na mm-hmm. hindi lang pala. In, kasi sa, sa mga initial na mga na publication sa Muntinlupa, mm-hmm. and even dun sa initial na mga presentations ko, mm-hmm. it seems na 1935 siya talaga na finalized. No? Para, mm-hmm. para na-conceptualize ganon. It turns out na even before the Commonwealth period, talagang mm. pinag-iisip pa talaga siya. Pag at least pag tungtong na 1930s, nasa isip na siya ng ano, nasa isip na siya ng kulot ng insular government, no? So it's a long, kumbaga it's a long decision mm. making. It's a long project that mm. that, that was uh, implemented. So oh, yeah. ang ang laking discovery for for me, no? Yeah. The the nagan debunk and that's mm. where the this piece may be and history mm-hmm. uh, differs. Ah, that's okay. a sisi sisingit ng Paul sa pagtinanong bakit kumalat ng chismis. Yun mm. ang magandang tanong, no? Uh-huh. So probably dahil din sa yun yung, yung pananaw na papagigit nang kasi kami ng dalawang malaking lupain ng Madrigal. Mm. So siguro kaya din kumalat, no? And at the time naman din kasi uh, most ng mga 
estates dito sa Montinlupa na no? in the in during the American period mm. are actually uh hacendas. For example, right. sa Ipat, you have the Hacienda Posadas, which mm. is the Posadas village. Yeah. Ah. Na, na na based dun sa mga balita sa Tribune ay dating tanima ng sibuyas. Huh? <laughs> you have a, you have as well the Rancho Gaches, mm-hmm. which is ala Yeah. na kalaon na, na ang may-ari pala no, na si Samuel Gatches yung original owner ng Hiccups no? mm. then when he uh, later on uh, the, uh, siya at yung asawa ng LC mm. dinunate yan sa uh, social welfare yeah LC Gatches yes kaya yeah. LC, LC Gatches village mm. so you have as well etong Masyenda Madrigal the biggest of them all kung tutuusin yes but in the present day Ayala Alabang village and uh-huh. itong Madrigal Business Park right mm. you have Susana too kaya siguro kumalap din talaga kasi yeah. sila yung mm. the, the influential so far sila yung tatlong major na mga may-ari ng lupain na, na nabasa ko talaga no mm. so, sa pagkakalkal ko sa Tribune and yeah. yes, we're thankful to the National Library of Australia for their goodness with God. <laughs> we, we, are, we are praying that the National Archives of the Philippines will be also like that. Sorry mm. naman. Sana. Oh. Ngayon, ano I ko mean, lang kasi, ang napansin mm. ko dyan, siguro kung bakit din kumalat. Well, going back to James C. Scott, ang rumor mongering can be considered as weapons of the week. So, mm. since dominated na mga asyenday nandito, so, <laughs> it's one way of trying to quote-unquote uh, discredit or at least yeah. say na na sobra nang yaman ito pamilya to kaya kumalat ang yes. chismis. It's a very rocky relationship na. I mean, as you said, that uh, sometimes chismis or gossip uh, can actually lead to clues or lead to questions that can uh, lead the investigation and be- eventually become history if verified. But if, uh, because sometimes history books don't always get like the full story, you know, but at the same time, it could just be lead you to a wild goose chase. Parang, ay, wala nun basihan. Uh, mm-hmm. but so, or sometimes, as you said, it might be intentionally deployed. Like, for example, uh, I think a, a good example would be why uh, Mabini have um, lumpo because of syphilis, but in fact, it yeah. was uh, polio. Uh, so, can you tell us that, like, maybe why? Like, uh, what, what, why do these kind of things uh, happen? You know, maybe why, why was he was it said to have syphilis? Or, and like another, yeah, all the, well, Sometimes it's not only make them look bad, but also make some certain figures look good, like Gregorio del Pilar. He was like in the American history books, he was made to look like a boy general. But he, in truth, you know, at least the stories say that he was actually incompetent. You know, in real life, na parang it wasn't a glorious death. It was actually yeah. And he's so, not even the youngest. Yes, there yes, you go. Si, si, mm. si Manuel Tinyong youngest, by the way, parang twenty one mm. na si Manuel Tinyo twenties. Yeah. Saka, mm-hmm. ano, saka isa pa chismis dyan tukol kay Goyo, no, by the way. Oo, yeah. Ay, ano, yung, yung manner of his death, diba? Kar- kakalimitan sa mga, sa visual, sa creative, mm-hmm. na visualization sa ginagawa natin. Ano, eh. He was riding his, uh, in a white horse. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Uh, tumatakbo sa paligid ng pasong tira, then then mm-hmm. nabaril siya bigla. Pero kasi yung eyewitness accounts nung dalawang aid niya, no, mm-hmm. na nandoon si Colonel Rus siya, saka si Colonel Enriquez, sabi mm-hmm. yeah. hindi, Um, ano, tinatanong ni Del Pilar yung mga Amerikano, sinabihan namin yung moko dahil tatamaan siya ng bala. Mm. Ayaw yung moko, o, titinamaan nga siya. <laughs> yung nasa Goyo. It's a dumb yung, way to die, yung, yeah. Yung scene sa Goyo, di ba, na parang yeah. tumayun siya, tas yung tinamaan na lang siya bigla. That, that, oh. That's the real score there. Yun talaga yung, mm. yung manner of his death na talagang uh, More accurate. tinamaan sa <laughs> pisngi, tapos tumago sa bato, and that's it. In which case, at, at least in that instance, Uh, the history books were wrong, and the chismis, or at least the eyewitness accounts that you put, is actually can actually correct the history books. So when you say history, sometimes history can include eyewitness accounts yeah, or yeah. chismis. But again, it's about verification. So if you can verify, those have been verified. So now it's part of our part of our history. But again, sometimes the way history is written can be exaggerated and even. Propagandistic, you know. I do want to before we get into like the meat of it on, on propaganda. Um, I, 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 maybe you can comment. I'm, I'm not sure if you watched Made in Malacanang, but there were a lot of number one incorporation of like, uh, uh chismis or gossip accounts, and there are things like, uh, at the beginning of the film, there, there were several assassination attempts on Marcos. There was also, uh, a lot of violent people 
Stormy na Malacanang. So perhaps you can comment on at least what that movie has done right now and maybe your reaction to it as a historian or social scientist. So yeah. Actually, hindi ko masyadong panood. Ah, uh-huh, <laughs> so, hindi pa. Hades, di ba? Okay, Pero yeah. Pero sa dami kasi nang nagpo-post, mm-hmm. parang ko na siya napanood. <laughs> so, <laughs> parang, ano mo yun, there's no sense of, ano, there's no sense of, napan ng pag-gasta ka ng pera, kung alam mo yun, lahat naman eh, nagsasalita tungkol doon, kanya-kanya mm-hmm. movie review. Yes. Okay? In fact, when we were there in Cebu, siguro, uh, ang, ang teorya ko, either, ano, either, bago kami nag-assembly sa Cebu, bago kami nag, ano, bago kami nag, uh, nag, opening sere welcome na bago may welcome dinner hmm. ng mga daga in SCP hmm. sa yes. city government of Cebu that's around nine six maybe uh, the, uh, the afternoon before that that well that welcome dinner na nol si amit to kampo na midin malakanya kasi nandun kami sa Cebu hmm. and dun pa sa Cebu dun pa si kolum niya about it eh uh-huh. kaya tama niya kung pahaging sa no may kung kung tisyo pahaging sa kanyang talk about it uh-huh. and sabi nga niya si I mean bida don well hmm. actually do sa mga nakita ko mga snippets nung mga ng mga portion si Bongbong doon. Lumalabas talaga na si I mean Bida kasi just imagine 'di ba si isang snippet sabi ni you know, sabi ni Ferdinand Barco sa kay Bongbong wala lang may bagay na mag-party. Di ba? Ah. Why why ano? Do? Why kung si Bongbong yung pinopromote hmm. doon? Bakit naman sisiraan ni Bongbong yung sarili niya, 'di ba? Yeah. He's not uh, sorry for the word. He's not an agent maybe to do that, 'di ba? Uh-huh. So yeah. maybe a bit is correct that uh, that the uh, film is based on I'm's perspective. <laughs> yun yung ano niya, yun yung pinaka main king conclusion niya eh. Pananaw ni I mean yung pelikula ngayon. And we, well, may may competing basis niya siguro kasi we all know I mean was the brain cha- the brains behind the experimental cinema of the Philippines. So happened oh. to ba, di mala at Oro Plata Mata. Especially Oro Plata Mata. That's one of oh. my most favorite Filipino films by the way. Di ko na parang din ang dalawa. That, that's all. Right. Mm. Yeah. Sobrang galing yes. ng ano, ng acting. Yes, rest in peace Cherry Hill. Kasi siya kasama siya doon sa pelikula mm. ngayon. Uh-huh. So, that's a uh, so talagang si kumbaga move ano eh si Netflix si Amy eh kaya talagang magagawa niya ng ganoong kaisipan para buuin mm. yung pelikula and siguro sa sa, sa, sa screenshots na available no sa, sa social media too nandoon din yung ano eh yung yung doon sa convent di ba mm. na yung pinaali yung pinaaalis actually hindi naman talaga no mm. hindi naman talaga decision ni Cory Perez di ba as, as what as, as what some Uh, hmm. some people are also te- pointing out that hindi naman talaga si Cory Perez na decide doon but rather it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a decision hmm. that uh, that was forced to her by circumstances eh to magkakagulo lalo so hmm. kaysa ma- mag end up into civil war so they better have to leave the the, the country uh, as soon as possible at hindi hmm. pa nga nabanggit doon na iniwan nila yung nanay ni Marcos sa heart center uh, and yeah. Cory ended up paying the bills of uh paying the paying the hospital bills. Oh, that was nice. So yes, talaga nagulat din ako dito. Oh, talaga to ganun ganun ka no. Ano mm. nangyari doon na parang sa so dami-dami nang iiwanan yung nanay, 'di ba? I, I mean, mm. I can understand the jewel race. Yes. Papapalitan niya niko talaga mayaman sila pero yung nanay, 'di ba? So oh, okay. At lalo sa lalo sa lipunan natin, 'di ba? Na very mm. family centric. Then uh, also yung isang eksena doon yung sa sa mga madre, no? Mm. Na kasi yung on when at the moment when Ed sa happen wala sa Manila si Cory he was uh, she was in ano she was in uh, Cebu City as, mm. as well sa farm uh, nandoon siya for for a protest i think mm-hmm. then nung nung si Davia na siya na nagkakagulo sa Manila gawa ni uh, Enrile at ni Fidel Ramos malangit mm-hmm. tawag kalwa uh, mm-hmm. Cory had to ha, ha, Cory had to be hidden inside the Carmelite ka, inside the Carmelite convent Hmm. na on very very extremely rare circumstances na pum- pumayag na magpapasok na outsider. Hmm. No bawal na laki kasi as uh, as what uh, I witness also narited tinaboy si na no si na Piping Kuangko si Cory hmm. lang at si Chris ang piniyagan sa loob pumasok. Hmm. Then kaya lang nila magpalit-palit ng pwesto ng kama sa loob ng kumbento dahil sa takot nila na may mga snipers. Well Cebu yon. Uh, mm. home of, of the regional commands ng AFP at the time. You have mm. the, the, the Bactan Air Base, you have the Camp Seri Osmeña, mm. you have the Camp Sotero Cabajo na centro, mm. Camp Lapu-Lapu as well, yung headquarters ng, Bis- ng BISCOM at the time. Mm. Yes, okay. So, centro, centro talaga siya, military center talaga siya ng central besides at the time. Mm. So, takot din nila, kaya kailangan nila magpalit na magpalit ng ano. Tapos, <laughs> kinabukasan nila sila, bumalik ng Manila, Actually, patago pa nga yung pagbalik dapat nila, di ba? Na, 
sinakay sila sa private lane na hindi mm-hmm. gini-inform ang air ta- ang, ang control tower sino sakay di ba tas nag nas, na, nakatunog na lang yung control tower na si Cory mm-hmm. ang may dala yeah. so kaya kumarat na sa Manila na papunta yeah. na si Cory ng papunta na si Cory doon from Cebu mm-hmm. so and yes contemplative din si mga Carmelite sisters so that's the last thing on their mind mm-hmm. is to play mahjong mm-hmm. so well as, 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 as sa taong simbahan it's quite offensive too kasi mm. it uh, it also offensive to the charism of the Carmelite sisters na talaga mm. namang nagdarasal uh, mm. sila yung mga kalibel ng mga dagan eh ng mga daga ng mga daga saint ng daga Santa Clara convent yeah. mm. yung mga tipo na pag pumasok ka doon wala lang ang, ang the next thing that that the, that the world will learn from you is you're dead mm. no so wala talaga nilabasan doon kahit dumidol mm. di ba hindi sila pwedeng evacuate And yun nga, okay. no? uh, it's only upon the permission. Na, I think I, uh, I think ano yun, eh, supposedly dapat sa Santo Papa, pero the, the 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 prioress herself decided to allow Cory inside because of the because of the security uh, concerns na talagang valid security concerns that she has. Mm-hmm. So, kaya ako din, ako din naniniwala din ako na hindi naman ni siguro mag um, maglalaro si Cory ng Majong or papayagan mm-hmm. niya maglaro ng Majong yung mga kasama niya, 'di ba? Kasi yeah. Uh, Cory is uh, well based on the on the uh, uh, on the eyewitness accounts, no? Mm. Very very stingy to si Cory talaga, no? Mm. And talagang matas ang moral standard di ka nga nila, napaka 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 moralista kung baga. So mm. that's the the Sugalti is uh, is last on her mind di ka nga. Anyway, yeah. nagawa na sila no, gawas sila ng uh, widow in a convent kano, pang mm. pang lakas sa medium malakas niya. Yeah. Yeah. Pero, yeah. pero I think the movie itself I think dagdag ko lang dun sa ano I think the movie itself is a study on gossip itself you know it, it the, the, one of the threads tying the movie together is basically gossiping and three maids gossiping on certain issues so on and so forth mm-hmm. but then again it's also peppered by quote unquote gossips so uh-huh. so yeah I think that that movie was it's a study on what gossiping is and how it looks like in action yeah and then clearly in well in what Mike recently said there is always a gap between say movies or media and actual history and usually it's very difficult because there's a lot of details compiled but it's it won't fit in the movie so but they they do have to do cinematic license but other times and at least a lot of people have accused made the malakanya of being a piece of propaganda and of distortion but uh before we get into that you know perhaps we can uh get into at least discuss in general what is propaganda and how can we identify and deal with it okay so uh maybe board maybe you, you can start with like the concept what is propaganda okay uh, well, uh regarding propaganda well something that we can work on so uh, yeah. uh but first and foremost again i would like to disagree with the statement that uh, you know the propaganda can be everything But uh, it's not. Uh, it's difficult mm-hmm. to define propaganda, yes. But I think it can be defined. But it can be defined in relation to something else. And I, I think that's a more appropriate way of approaching what propaganda is. So mm-hmm. first, uh, propaganda in relation to persuasion. So what's the difference between propaganda and persuasion? So this is something that I, we would attach in the references. Uh, for Gart Jowett, uh, propaganda is, quote-unquote, a form of communication. That attempts to achieve a response that furthers the desired intent of the propagandist, while persuasion is something interactive and attempts to satisfy the needs of both persuader and persuasive. Well, persuadee. So, propaganda is by nature persuasive, but not all forms of persuasion is propagandistic. So, mm. again, there, there's a line there, uh, but the focus of this definition is furthering the desired intent, not necessarily the intent itself, mm-hmm. but you know, achieving a response that more or less pushes for what the propagandist wants. Uh, in relation to psychoanalysis, which I think I would also like to emphasize, mm-hmm. uh, for Alexander Laskin, if studying Eric Fromm, which we have discussed Eric Fromm over and over again. Here's one of my favorite philosophers and psychoanalysts. But uh, for Eric Fromm and for Alexander Laskin, propaganda is basically establishing uh, a relationship between an individual and something bigger than that individual. It's about combining the individual with something bigger than itself. So mm-hmm. forming a symbiotic relationship between an individual or a religion, a country, a movement, or a cult, or oh, who knows. But it's mm-hmm. about attaching the individual to something greater than yeah. himself. So that's propaganda for in relation, of course, to psychoanalysis. So I, uh-huh. I think we should drop... Now, this is my 
primary problem with public discourse right now. You can throw propaganda here and there. You know, it's, a, mm-hmm. it's, it's an easy word to just slap on something. Right. But uh, for the sake of analysis, we need to abandon any, you know, having one single definition of propaganda. We need to relate mm-hmm. it with something else. I mean, the definition it's, uh, itself by default is kind of broad. Um, but a lot of forms of media can have propagandistic, you know, qualities and characteristics. But if you look at, I think, in the same book, you know, propaganda is a deliberate and systematic attempt to shape perceptions, manipulate, manipulate cognitions, and direct behavior to achieve a response. So you're, you're right in doing uh, achieving a response. But it can shape perception. So perhaps maybe we can uh, try to differentiate, you know, propaganda from say. And a lot of people make the equate the uh, association with that, and say, for example, advertising commercials, wherein the uh, commercials are meant to convince people to buy something, uh, in the same way that electoral ads are trying to convince you to vote for a certain person, you know. So. Yeah, how would you differentiate that? And then we go to Mike a bit later after that. But Borge, how would you differentiate that? Differentiate what? Between Pro- propaganda like, and everything else? And advertising. Or maybe clarify that, how you put the wedge between propaganda and, well, almost anything in media, which is, mm. you know, or anything with an argument. Like, even like a television show would have like an argument or a thesis statement. And in a way, would like, like to... Um, persuade you of it, you know. No, but I think yeah. how would you make that wedge between propaganda and what makes it different from any other form of media? Well, let's reassert the line between the public and the private. So I mm. think propaganda is a matter for public concerns. It's it's a political thing. That's propaganda. Mm. But this is where I think I would agree with you in part regarding considering propaganda as more of an adjective, as something propagandistic. So propaganda is something I be, I, I think as, as far as analysis is concerned that, that would right. allow us to pursue proper analysis without conflating everything with everything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, propaganda is by nature political. But mm-hmm. propagandistic, an adjective, is something that can bridge with the public with the private and can be found right. in certain private items like marketing and such. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, propaganda with a big P you know, is something political. That is what separates it from you know, marketing right. and advertising. Because hmm. in a way, we talked about chismis. That can also be a form of propaganda, uh, with sometimes even black propaganda. That's what how they use it in even mm. election campaigns. That's mm. uh, in fact, you have an example with maybe close, maybe a bit closer to recent events. Uh, who really ordered the assassination of Nino Aquino? Some people say it was Ver. Some people say, who was a loyal subject of Marcos, the other one who was Imelda herself. Some people say, it, well, it, 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 well, some people say it was Marcos, but people say that, no, it's not Marcos. So again, no one really, the history books, when well, we can talk to Mike about it, but uh, it, there are conflicting reports on who actually killed Yonino, y- 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 probably mm. because it's, it's their way of trying to make sense of it, but also maybe black propaganda, you know, showing that maybe the house of Marcos is not as united you know so yeah but it's sometimes the enemies of for example Mabini. Mabini had enemies in the Malolos Congress so they said oh he uh, which is a sexually transmitted disease but instead it's like polio which is something that is more circumstantial you know it's you know it's it's not linked to you know sin you know and all that mm. so I don't know um with the, so maybe Mike what do you think about you know, the relationship between you know history and you know, propaganda, you know, what can you say about that? So, ayun, no, uh, as we, uh, konting dagdag lang din na sa, na, sa, pers- sa discussion mm. na the earlier, sa concept ni itself. Yeah. Um, ang propaganda kasi, no, sa Latin is to, uh, means to propagate, okay? Mm. Kaya nga, di ba, yung Decastery for Evangelization na hawak ni Cardinal Chito mm. <laughs> uh-huh. in Rome is originally called as propaganda fide. Mm. Kaya, when it was, uh, when, when Vatican, when Vatican II reorganized the Roman Curia, Hmm. Tinawag na siya na, na congregation for the uh, congregation for the evangelization, di ba? Uh, kasi yun yung parang ano, yun yung talagang pinaka uh, aim niya. And apart from that, yung Vatican then maybe na-realize din na nag-iba kasi ang, ang definition ng propaganda, ng word na uh-huh. from its original meaning na propagation, mm-hmm. something political. Especially, okay. and, uh, not only political, but also towards uh, misleading, di ba? Mm-hmm. Uh, Towards uh, deceit, okay? Yeah. Uh, tanda natin na 
the yung propaganda as uh, as a misleading tool was started uh-huh. the century maybe dun siya para mas up na apply especially lalo so the word na- propaganda is a victim of propaganda yes <laughs> anyway, uh-huh. yeah diba yeah. so funny thing there kasi uh, nung world war 1 the uh, allies and the central powers both is uh, hmm. yeah para i-project yung uh, na the the na evil yung kalaban nila mm-hmm. and what they are fighting for is a noble cause na kinakailangan mm-hmm. na matalo yung kalaban yes. so yung mga sandamukan ng mga motherhood statements ang mga nationalistic statements and kasama na rin doon as well yung pro, yung projection of of, of of power mm-hmm. so for example uh, dinadaya yung mga yung mga air kills no mm-hmm. yung mga yung mga mobilization ng ano mga mobilization yung mm-hmm. resulta ng kalaban mm-hmm. kaya, pwedeng i uh, hindi pwedeng basta-basta i-declare na talo di ba yeah. yung mga bagay sa so suppression of uh, of of facts na nagaganap din mm-hmm. so even of all of those experiences so therefore the Vatican changed the name of the congregation itself mm-hmm. the, in the 70s from being from being called as propaganda fide to uh-huh. war uh, of peoples uh-huh. so ang laking shift di ba even mm-hmm. even the ones who originally used the term ay kinakailangan nilang palit of the policy sa propaganda of the policy maybe of the policy sa bala mm. paggamit nung terminolohya so mm-hmm. yun pabalik tayo do sa da, sa tanong kanina na pa, paano nga ba na shape ng mga films ang ating kasaysayan so may kita din natin na sa mga halimbawa no lalo noong starting in the in maybe World War One onwards mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. na crucial din yung films in promotion sa in promoting their uh, in promoting the war the, the war causes no mm-hmm. yung uh, yung kausa ng isang bansa para makipagdigmaan mm-hmm. kaya papansin niyo do nung panahon ng digmaan din importa uh, well well uh, well wala pa masyadong movies talaga di ba kung tutuusin pero yung mga news reels kasi showing uh, countries mobilize, mobilizing their troops, di ba? Hmm. Attacking front lines, tasamahan pa ng photographs, samahan pa ng mga accounts ng mga brutalities hmm. ng bawat isa, whether true or not, talagang nakakapag-ignite yun ng nationalist sentiments ng mga, hmm. ta- ng mga countries involved during World War One. Kaya nagpapadala sila ng mga uh, dagdag ng mga pwersa. Hmm. So, yun, mas, mas lumaganap yung paggamit niyan, as we can see, nung panahon ng Nazi era na ginamit talaga siya ni Hitler as uh, as a tool uh, para ipangalat ang idea ng Nazism at tanggapin siya ng mga tao. Hmm. So we all know Joseph Goebbels uh, his, mm-hmm. his his uh, his, his mm-hmm. textbook uh, case for for propaganda in itself. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, na nakakapag-trigger nakakapag-trigger talaga ng mga tao. Uh-huh. Diba nga? He, he was the one who delivered the speech that triggered the crystal knock. Just mm. imagine that, diba? <laughs> it's not Hitler who really gave that that uh that steering speech that led to that to that event, but rather it's, it's Goebbels. Mm. So, ato yan may kita natin yung paggamit. One, one of the things na ginamit nila is film. Mm. So, yan papasok yung case ni Lenny Riefenstahl. So, yes, mm. uh, sa larangan ng film, she's uh she's a great. Uh, name, kumbaga. I credit Hansi, fo- Hansi Juliano for this. Sa kanya ko unang nabasa si Lenny Riefenstahl. Hmm. Sa isang, uh, sa isang senior na pwede sa Facebook. <laughs> so, uh, well, nung, nung binasa ko, oh, okay, um, barang kung ko nalaman, ah, okay, nag-exist pala si Lenny Riefenstahl. And talaga controversial yung mga films niya kasi uh, she made films. She, ha, kasi babae siya. Uh, hmm. Uh, so for the for the sake of our audience or of our listeners, so babae po si Lenny Riefenstahl. Yeah. I don't know lang kung tama ang, pro- ang pronunciation ko ng, ng, ng name, ng surname, by the way, German. Eh. So, mm. ngayon, si Lenny Riefenstahl ay uh, ginam- nagpag- nagpagamit siya sa Nazi government talaga mm. na gumawa siya ng mga films mm. uh, promoting Nazi films. So, some examples of which ay yung Triumph of the Will na pinapakita niya yung uh, Nuremberg Rally ni Hitler na talagang sundang mo kalimang tao maaten, yung mga tao. Mm na haling sumigaw ng sighail no uh, sana wag tayo maban because I, I so diba yeah, she used uh, she, uh, with, with, with mass of people doing the Hitler mm. salute na, and, and crying like crazy uh, mm-hmm. sa Tagalog sa masamang Tagalog sabi na ito yung sinasabi ng mga matanda na, na, na nakakalaglag ng panty diba yung <laughs> so nakakalaglag din nakakalaglag panty ganun ganun mm. level yung ano yung charisma ni Hitler di ba mm. talagang hypnotic talaga and Lenny Riefenstahl captured that in film and mm. later uh 
release it in 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 uh, in German audiences. Mm. Kaya kaya ang ending lalo na reinforce yung ano, yung mm. uh, yung might ni Hitler no, yung kanyang yung kanyang convincing power niya na siya ang makapagligtas sa sa Germany mula sa Jewish conspiracy at muli magbabalik ng kanilang kapangyarihan. Mm. Now, hindi lang naman si uh, si Hitler ang mga Nazi ang ganyan. Even as even the the Russians are also like that. Yeah. No? The all uh, well maybe as part of the of the Marxist uh doctrine at the time mm-hmm. no that though hindi naman siya may audio na kamali wala mm-hmm. naman sa capital if uh, sa mm-hmm. capital or sa commons manifesto no hindi mm-hmm. naman siya direktang sinabi ni Marx if, if I'm not mistaken right. so if I remember eh, ginamit yon ni na ng ano ng uh, ng mga Bolshevik no ng mm-hmm. ng Russian Communist Party para mm-hmm. i-promote ang ideas ng communism no mm-hmm. and into ingrain sa mga sa mga Russians na na evil capitalist ang West at tinakila mm. sila magape. Mm. Now, when World War II happened, lalo rin na magdipayahan kasi mm. uh, in World War II dyan, napapasok yung number one, yun, yun, apart, apart from the coverage of newsreels, okay? Mm. Talaga, doon mo makikita kasi example sila ng propaganda in a way, eh. well, nagbabalita niya, yung konting propaganda rin eh. Mm. Uh, makikita mo din yan sa mga pinoproduce ng Hollywood kasi uh, Hollywood When, when America entered World War II, mm. naging kasangkapan ng Hollywood para i-promote ang ano, para i-promote ang uh, na, 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 na kailangan sumali ng Amerika sa World War II. Mm. Dahil it's a noble cause for democracy yes. and remember Pearl Harbor. And kinakailangan gawin mm. ng US government doon kasi a decade prior to Pearl Harbor, mm. talagang isolationist ang US as we all know, di ba? Maybe the, 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 the three of us all uh, are all aware of that. Na talaga ayaw makialam ng Amerika into world affairs. Hmm. And when Pearl Harbor happened, kina, doon sila doon nila na-realize na parang uh, hindi natin pang i-alam, eh, nagkanda gulo-gulong mundong ibabaw. So kaya kailangan natin iyakagi ng ating mga citizens to also join us in our democratic cause. Right. So you, you see, uh, Hollywood actors not only serving uh, in the military, for example, hmm. si Ronald Reagan. The classic example is Ronald Reagan, by the way. Hmm. Mer- uh, si, Jim, si, G- si Jimmy Stewart ata, hindi na kamali ng pangalan. Uh, mas mm-hmm. mas hard for si Jimmy Stewart kasi mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. he, he not only served no pero she, uh, he he also piloted bombers mm-hmm. in Europe talaga naglalaglag sila ng bomba no in combat zone so, even like gay ball ng gun with the wind just just, exa- <laughs> just imagine no? before mm-hmm. the war uh, tabo sa takilang gun with the wind ni uh, uh, ni Clark mm-hmm. Gable with his uh, immortal line uh, honey I don't give a damn diba sabi niya mm-hmm. kay Casablanca Spar- yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, si, uh, si Vivian Lee, si Vivian Lee, di ba? Vivian Lee, so, yeah. You imagine si Clark Gable na matanda na at that time. I think uh, he was late 40s, uh, mm. uh, late 30s to early 40s. Sumali din siya, nag, nag, nagpalipad din siya ng aeroplano uh, across the Atlantic, papuntang Europa. So, mm. ganun, and even politicians are also uh, motivated as well. Lyndon Johnson, mm. for example, congressista mm. na si Lyndon Johnson, Uh, he he went on leave, I think, sa U.S. Congress mm. para lang mm. sumama sa isang fact-finding mission right. sa mm. Pacific. And he met Douglas MacArthur there. Mm. Kaya nag, yeah, nagbuka siyang war hero on mm. on, uh, on, mm. on on U.S., di ba? So, ang dami. And, si, and the most classic yun nga, the most classic case being Ronald Reagan. Kasi Ro- mm. Ronald Reagan, while serving uh, stateside, made a lot of training films mm. for yes. U.S. Uh, armed forces. Mm. Uh, I think one uh, madami madami siyang ginawa eh. Nata- and talagang nagpapalipad talaga siya uh, parang natat- may isang nang film akong nap- na- napanood no, na si Ronald mm. Reagan parang pinaparang fighter pilot siya na pinapatawag na siya sa na pinatawag siya sa no, sa Pentagon mm. Mm. May, may Pentagon na ka ba nun? sa sa War Department by the way sorry mm. sa War Department yan para, para safe sa War Department because uh, i-relegate na siya to- towards training pilots no? Mm. So parang mm. sabi may may line siya doon eh, na uh, na parang pumunta sa Washington ba no meron parang tapos decades later si Aldo he became the US president diba mm. <laughs> So parang what a foreshadowing it is So that that to mention as well yan yung mga animated films diba even the animated mm. films are also uh, used towards propaganda promoting the cause of American democracy, di ba? Yes. Pagtungtong ng Korean War, uh, mm-hmm. the Cold War, you have people like John Wayne, you have people 
na, na kagaya ng uh, kagaya ng iba't ibang mga uh, director sa Hollywood yung yung, oh. yung yung na lang red baiting sa Screen Actors Guild di ba sa US talaga makita mo na unti-unting mayroong pagpasok ng propaganda right. and even until the 80s no ma- manifesting yan kasi for example you have uh, various Hollywood mm. action films always show the Russians as the as the enemy yeah so, yeah, yeah. And nung bata ko, napapanood ko yung mga yun kasi tatay ko, by this action genre, by the way. Uh-huh. And then, ito, when, when, we, when I grew up and became, ha, when became, uh, had, had my feet wet in scholarship, mm-hmm. so, hindi ko nare-realize na, anak na to, koy, may propaganda, may propaganda, <laughs> yung mga pelikula lang to, no? And mm-hmm. even that, today, no? may kita mo yan, kasi, uh, <laughs> my father, uh, funds uh, watching Netflix, by the way, mm-hmm. sobrang ladalas niya, napagsawa na ibang mga Hollywood films, He ended up watching even Bollywood. One oh. time, parang napadaan na, na, na ako. When I was watching, may pinapanood siya pelikula, I forgot the name. Mm. Guro ako, ang, kala, ang, ang, ang kalaban, uh, ang siyempre setting India, Indian Army, ang kalaban, mm. Pakistani Army. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ang gano'n mga bagay. And, mm. uh, and nagkikita natin na talagang, talagang meron siyang daloy. And I, mm. I heard even some key dramas to, are also mm. like that. So, ah, yeah. it's better Korea yeah. compared to their, their counterparts. Mm, okay? right. So, lawak talaga nung mm. impact ng propaganda and uh, yeah. and, and it film. Is, so, yeah. Pati yeah. talaga. Kasi for example, sa, sa US, di ba, yung mga, yung mga, yung mga cowboy films si John Wayne. Talaga, Bro, Indian ako lang. <laughs> whether they like it or not, marami na influensya ka na magpa, mm. no, na, na, na sumama sa Vietnam War. And mm. ito ba yung pinakang, ano, uh, pinakang ironic na example, no? Uh, this is one of my favorite films, Full Metal Jacket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Na para, lalo, lalo yung half ng film, di ba, na si, uh, mm. si Lee Ermey, by the way, who studied in the Philippines, <laughs> mm. yeah. uh, and very the Filipina. Sabi yes. niya, you, you see uh, Lee Ermey's character as Gunny, di ba, na nagmumura na, ano, uh, mm. what, what's your height, uh, private cowboy, five foot mm. nine, they, I don't know, they stuck mm, that Shit high. That high, yeah. <laughs> I know, so, yeah. Uh, so yung yung ganung uh, expletive na well to titingnan mo critic ni ano critic ni Kubrick ni Stanley Kubrick sa ano sa military uh, uh, industrial complex ng US no mm. oh, script niya maybe yung Vietnam War pero mm. pag nakita mo sa YouTube yung mga clips ng ano clips ng full metal jacket ano sinasabi ng mga tao number one yung mga war veterans always ng Vietnam War they always say that that's the most accurate film about uh, about boot camp mm. Mm. pag US Marines, yan talaga talaga pinaka-accurate. Eh well, kasi yeah. si Ermy is a uh, destructor uh, yeah. in real life before he became an actor. Secondly, sabi nila, yan ang yan pelikula niyan ang nakapag-motivate sa akin to yeah. enter the military. Right. And we can still see it kapag, na, kapag galimbawa titigin ka ng mga clips galing sa American Sniper, hindi sinasabi ng mga tao bakit sila nag-enlist. I watch American Sniper and I... I <laughs> yeah. So ganun kay ikat hindi yung impact nung ano nung mm. mga film sa no nung yes. mga film sa pagsadali din ng ating asaysayan lalo uh-huh. lalo sa konteksto ng gera sorry mm. for all para war time yung mga binabag ito talaga ng mas mas nagmamanifest no yeah. and mm-hmm. recently even yung top gun no mm. I, i don't know if you watch yes. top gun yung mm. that, that the first two, one the, the first and the second one mm. it's said about yeah one, kasi mas amoy na amoy yung ano eh mas amoy na amoy yung propaganda value sa top gun na una no uh-huh. kesa sa doon sa pangalawa. Mm. Yung pangalawa kasi medyo na itong recent na Top Gun, hindi masyado eh. Parang nostalgia lang eh. Yeah. Oo. So, Parang nostalgia. Uh, yeah. Saka ano eh, saka, uh, kung magkano siya, read between the lines. Parang ganun. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Unlike, unlike, unlike ng Top Gun 1, just imagine, they call it the yeah. Eh, sino naman ang nagpoproduce ng MIG, di ba? It's Russia. Yeah. And those mm. who used are their Russian al- are their allies, no? Mm. At yung ibang mga nan- non-aligned countries, gaya ng Indonesia, gaya ng India. So, mamimili ka na lang sino sa mga bansa yung tinutukoy ng US, mm. di ba? Mm. Eh, hindi naman mag-aaway ang US at ang, ang Indonesia at US at ang India, technically. Yes. So, probably, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's in Eastern Europe, no? Mm. Or, yeah. Uh, um, northern uh, Northern Pacific siguro mm-hmm. at safe mm-hmm. to say kung itong creative ang isip mo di ba mm-hmm. yeah. and lalo yung uh, at may issue pa recently sa Top Gun no? sa, sa Top Gun Maverick uh-huh. yung initially yes. yung pasanggal nung flag ng Taiwan kasi di ba sila pinadaretso yun sa original film nakalagay yung flag ng Taiwan sa jacket ni ano, sa jacket ni Tom Cruise tapos pagdating doon sa, mm-hmm. sa, ano, sa teaser na wala Then pagdating sa film, mm. nandun na uli. 
So <laughs> it reflects well mm. US China relations, no? Yes. <laughs> so I, I I hope I I wonder if the if the Chinese will be able to watch that film considering mm. na may time alam naman natin ang state ng dalawang bansa ngayon, no? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Ano, habang nung, habang nung mga, nung mga binanggit ng mga examples. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. No, thank you. Yeah. Mm. From, from the, again, I think we can sum up, I think I, I can extract two points that we can, right. you know, uh, first, something that characterizes propaganda something essentially political is that it identifies public friends and public enemies. Yes. So I think that's one way uh, for us to measure what propaganda is, uh, something essentially political. So, yes. naalala ko yung pagpapalit ng kalaban. Eh. So, napapansin ng mga tao na during the 90s, mm. 80s, mga rush ng kalaban sa mga American movies. And eventually, naging Muslim. Muslim na. So, yeah. and then eventually, naging Cotton Code Chinese to an extent, tumalabas. tumalabas <laughs> di, di pwede. Kailangan di nga, ano, kaya they cater. Yeah, they, yeah. they cater to it. So, again, troubling relationships with the, yes. with the again, public and public friends, public enemies. Nakit, napansin ko rin ito sa mga historical you know, pop drama sa China mm-hmm. I mean, for past yeah. four years. You, lagi, ang usual theme nila is either ancient China or World War II. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, makapun ang kalaban nila dun. So, By so, the way, remember, they also have their yeah. own propaganda films on Wolf Warrior, you know, on yeah. the Chinese saving the white uh, soldiers instead of white saviors. So, minapanat ako ng college yeah. na yeah. film about, uh, about sa Chinese Revolution. Mm-hmm. Yung, yung, moment, yung, ano, yung moment na mula doon sa, sa Long March ni Namao hanggang mm-hmm. doon sa pag, uh, pagpunta ni Chiang Kai-shek sa Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah. I forget the title. Pinapanood sa amin ng prof ko yan eh. I think meron akong kopya nun. <laughs> wow. I think the founding wow. of a republic. Is that, ano yung ba yung title nun? Parang, parang, parang. But the founding of a republic. Kasi may trio yun eh. Founding of a republic, founding of an army, founding of uh, the party. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a... Recently, na, ay, uh, hindi naman recently siguro to. Hmm. Pero it's more Hollywood. Ay, K-drama, Korean film siya. Pero... Hmm. Ito yung medyo bigati ni mga artista ng Amerikano. Just imagine hmm. Liam Neeson as Douglas McCarthy. I forgot the title. Ay, Basta, wow. Hmm, Mahanap nga yan. Tukul yeah. siya sa uh, Incheon Landings. Ah, Incheon Landings. Yung pagtulong ng, ng mga South Korean agents hmm. kina MacArthur hmm. sa Incheon Landings. Si Liam Neeson ang gumanap ng MacArthur dun eh. That's dun those, those two Scottish ones. Like, Kuhang kuha ni Liam Irish. Neeson Irish. ni MacArthur. <laughs> Finis Banderias, yung kuhang kuha niya. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Ang pinaka weird na MacArthur siya no. Uh, ano ba yung tungkol sa relationship ni MacArthur at ni Hirohito? Who was the actor mm. for that one? Mm, si Tom Lee Jones. Sabi <laughs> yeah. weird. Sabi pinaka weird looking na MacArthur nakita ko. But yeah. Anyway, and the I, other thing, yeah. yeah. yeah one the other is enemies and yeah. friends. Yeah, yeah. one is enemies one. and public friends. The other thing yung nabanggit ni Mike kanina earlier on which is in relation to battlefield reports and uh, uh, propaganda I think. Uh-huh. It's something that, by essence, ignores deliberately something while Nuance. highlighting <laughs> certain things, certain yeah. other things. That it, 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 in the no one say it's about deliberately ignoring something in order for you to spin it into something yeah. either non-harmful or greater. I think one of the examples I can think of would be the uh, the the, f- the video. I, no, I will not call it the video, but it's actually a recording. Uh, mm. The the storming of the Winter Palace. It was in 1920. The, I think it was a short film because there was no actual recording of the video of the actual storming of the Winter Palace so they had to remake the damn thing mm-hmm. and they made it in such a way that it's far more spectacular when in fact the actual event was not that dramatic so right. and then they had to so I think 1927 you had Sergei Einstein I think Sergei Einstein oh, yeah Sergei, Sergei Einstein. Einstein yeah October 10 days that shook the world 1927 mm-hmm. so they had to you know, create a film record of something that happened in the, you know, recent past. So they had you know, mm-hmm. the October Revolution in 1927. So, so yeah, I think those are ways, clear ways to try to ignore one thing. And I think these two, these two uh, films ignored uh, the simple fact that it was not the Bolsheviks who were the only prominent groups during the Russian Revolution. Actually, speaking of item, yeah. item side, no? isa, yeah. isa, isa rin yeah, pasok yeah. dyan, Battleship, Battleship of Potemkin. Yeah, yeah, Battleship of Potemkin, yeah. Isa. And yeah. interesting mm-hmm. though, by the way, is yung ginamit nila dun is, I think, yung Aurora na cruiser, di ba? Na mm-hmm. nasa Hitchburg ngayon. Yeah. Yung, 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 about, by the way, in the Philippines, is that the, the cruiser Aurora is one of the survivors ng Tsushi, Tsushima Strait. Uh, Battle of Tsushima. And it went to Manila. Oh. It was in I think, four weeks at least, no? Oh, right. Ito, dumaong sila sa Cavite. 
May oh, picture dyan. May, na- may nakuha kong picture sa National Library nung Aurora. I think I, I uploaded that on my Facebook account. Mm. And nakapaka-public siya, by the way. Yeah. So, uh, so napat pa sila dito, no? Mm. Uh, kaya I don't I don't know if most Filipino military historians know that well. Mm. Obviously, I'm not Ricardo Jose, who, who is really the, the demigod of Philippine military history. Mm. So, it's a, it's a footnote yun. Uh, some, some quite interesting trivia as well. This Aurora, yeah. imagine siya mm. putin, di ba? Pero, nagdagdag din na, yung ano din, yung, yung mga films na pang propaganda, hindi lang din uh, internationally, no, nangyayari. Even mm. in our own locality, nangyayari din siya. Mm. So, Ah, uh, hindi pa, di ako familiar sa mga titles by the way, sa mga mm-hmm. sa ilan sa mga to. Pero kasi naka-follow din siya ako sa ano eh, sa ano to sa Casa Grande film ano. Yeah. Film at uh, p- Facebook page, 'di ba mm-hmm. ni Mike De Leon? Ah, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the grandchild of Doña Sisang of LVN. So, mm-hmm. if you are uh, if you are really into old films, you that's that's the page to go by the way. So, nakikita ko din sa ilang mga ina-upload ng ano, ina-upload ng Casa Grande ng mga posters no ay mga pelikula na ginawa ng LVN about uh, about the Hook Rebellion no of which mm. pinapakita mga Hook Balahap bilang mga komunistang mga mga brutal tapos <laughs> ang Philippine uh, military bilang mga bida and yung practice ni hindi rin naman na strange sa Philippine film community at the time kasi even pre-war mm ganun din pa na practice for example uh if, I, I think si Alfred Bacoy in his uh, Closer Than Brothers in one of uh, in one of his Uh, um, photos that were shown on the center fold, di ba? Eh, di, di alam ko may, may closer kayo or nabasa mm. niya closer. Meron dun, di ba, yung, ano, yung isang, yung isang pre-war film, yung, yung Punit na Bandila, starring oh. Fernando Pino Senior, as a PMI cadet, showing, uh, showing cadet life in, at, the, at the pre-war Philippine Military Academy, oh. na ang, ang ending ay pinopromote yung, pinopromote na, ano, na, na, uh, na ang, ang PMI as a premier institution of the government. Mm. Kaya din siguro no during that do, during those times marami talagang that aspire mm. uh to enter PMA especially mm-hmm. of the elites kasi ngayon di ba kapag tinitingnan mo yung mga background ng mga PMA usually yeah. middle class pero uh, in the pre-war era even mga anak ng mga politiko anak ng mga mayaman nap- napasok ng PMA for example si ano I forget the I forget yung pangalan Uh, si Victor Rosillas pala, but yun, mm. naalala ko. Si Victor Rosillas, anak ni Senator Camilo Rosillas, di ba? Mm. Who was a member of the PMA class of 1940. So, let's yeah. imagine, pumapasok ang mga, ano, pumapasok nung araw, mga anak na mayaman. Ngayon, wala ka naman. <laughs> And you don't expect a fire of the Ayalas to enter the military academy. Baka nga dumiretso pa ng VM ay yung mga yun. <laughs> yes, di ba? Um, yeah. May ito po, talaga existing na talaga siya sa atin. And then, yeah. Kapag di pas, usually you can you can feel the propaganda in Philippine movies sa action genre talaga eh. Mm. Uh, that, that's one example. And then meron pa yung, ano, meron pa isa pang film na pinapakita ay ano, yung, ano, yung Blue Diamonds sa Philippine Air Force. Mm. The, the 60s, flying their F-86 Sabres na tungkol sa mga piloto ng, ano, piloto ng Air Force. Mm. And at the time, talagang, ano, yung, yung iba sa mga sumama doon sa film ay, ay actual na mga members ng Blue Diamonds. Mm. Ay, ito ko yun sa Pinoy Evators na the page na yung film na yun. Kung yun nagkakamal eh. Hmm. Na poster, I think. Then, at the same time, you have as well, uh, you have as well, may isa pang film, Marshall Luira naman, na patungkol sa ano? Patungkol naman sa buhay uli ng kadete ng PMA. Hmm. Na ang tatay niya sa parintendent, tapos siya play, siya yung kadete, di ba? Parang yung, yung dynamics ng dalawang yun. Yet, despite of that family drama, you can see the subtle promotion of, of PMA again. <laughs> Then pagpasok ng 80s eh, yung mga pang yung mga police titles no yung mga mm. bawa ano um, ano to uh, Elmer Hamnyas Bulaklak ng Maynila di ba yung mga ganung mga titles FJ <laughs> for example was birthday was yesterday mm, yeah. And, yeah so sila yung mga nasa genre na yan ni Rescue mm. Cortez di ba mm. na doon naman ang, ang ang propaganda naman is something either between uh, between uh, AFP and NPA Mm-hmm. which is uh, we all know na pinapromote naman NP something evil as well or mm-hmm. is yung mga pinifeature naman yung mga ano yung mga moro na ba or as something mm-hmm. uh, as something na kalaban din ng gobyerno oh. or kung hindi man sila uh, parang pino uh, pinapromote naman propaganda value doon is yung vigilantism naman mm-hmm. lalo noong 80s and 90s talagang ma- mainit ang ano ba ito sa pinang police uh, vigilantism no mm-hmm. kaya and sa akin na opinion ko lang pinisisisigurado din yung mga pelikula na yun. bakit ano yun? 
bakit yung y- ibang members sa security sector natin medyo maangas din yung mani, ugali, yeah. <laughs> parang meron silang disregard towards rules. Kasi parang feeling nila sila si Yanis, sila si Jai. sila si John Wayne, sila si Jim that could break the rules and everything. Oh. Pero sabi nga nung sudyante ko sa, sa isang sudyante ko sa college dati na nasa US Navy na when mm. he was uh, nung nag-uusap kami about what, about uh, about Top Gun Maverick. Sabi nga niya sa yun si ano eh si Maverick sa Top Gun, ano yun ni eh, maangas yun ni. Eh. Ang so, stir niya salty. Salty ang si ano eh, salty ang si Maverick. Eh. Mm. Hindi na <laughs> para na mga official yan eh. Ibang gano'ng right. mga gano'ng mga notion, di ba? Yeah. Of course, Actually, the hmm. most famous of them all, of course, is the 1965. Hmm. Yung dalawang pelikula ng 65, you have uh, Makapagal, showing tagumpay na mahihirap, and you have a hmm. spell for the Marcos, showing Iginuit at Tadhana. Hmm. And for the record's sake, I watch Iginuit at Tadhana, no? Sa QTV hmm. Channel 11, kung napanood yun, bata pa ako noon, no? Hmm. <laughs> I, I have to be honest, no? she's really damn pretty there. So, mm-hmm. ko siya, talagang convincing value. No? Talagang naaalala ko yung storyline niya na uh, nandun si Marcos posing himself as, as the one who, uh, who, has, who asserts the rights of the veterans. No? <laughs> And at the time, talagang, ano, talagang member ng committee veterans si Marcos. Eh. So, mm. ko sabihin talaga na palatang po, palatang po forma talaga siya. And hmm. makapagal has to promote, has to, has to produce na gumpay na may hirap to respond to that, no? Hmm. So, magkakapit sila at the time. Then, we all know Marcos won, no? In the end, at the end of the day, hmm. then, uh, four years later, hmm. uh, three, uh, ba ba ba? Oh, four years later nga, so, hmm. another election is coming. So, kailangan na, na naman gumawa ni Marcos sa managbagong pelikula. And, hmm. enter now, the Baharlika. And the most famous cast of Maharlika, the one and only, Dolby Beams. <laughs> you know what happened next after that, di ba? Pero, you see, talagang, ano, talagang consistent talaga siya, uh, even, not, even on non-political, di ba? Siguro kung, kung ano, I don't know if it's to be considered as, ano, uh, for, for fairness sake, by the way. Hmm. Baka sabihin kasi ng mga iba mga ikin dito, may, may, may bias ako, you know, towards towards particular figure. Hindi <laughs> ko na kung pwede na i-consider yung, ano, you know, yung a dangerous life as a propaganda do kasi Inside. ano para honest siya kasi honest account siya pero not on the perspective of Filipino pero kasi foreign production siya mm-hmm. ito ko kanino yung a dangerous life a uh, dangerous Th- life yung kay, 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 kay ano yung sa EDSA yung pag-alis nila Marcos di ba mm-hmm. na mm-hmm. kung hindi kakamali sa, sa, sa Sri Lanka ginawa kasi mainit ang situation ah, ah Kaya, okay yeah, though, ito yung gawa ng Australian from the lives of the Marcoses yeah Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Medyo mukhang mabaliw si, ano eh, si Melda dyan eh. No? Parang very riveting, very powerful, but also parang deranged. <laughs> diba? Yeah. Dangerous life. No. Miniseries yan, di ba? Yes, yes, miniseries yan. Okay. Ay, ano, yun. Kaso kaso miniseries kasi, so that, that's not part of the film. Pero kung titignan mo, maaaring isa. Tapos, ano pa? Ito pa pala, nanimutan ko. Esca po. Hmm. I also watched that. I don't know kung hmm. napanood niyo. Okay. Uh, kay Richard Gomez. Saka kaya, no? Uh, si Richard Gomez ang binito na eh. Yung mm. tungkol sa pagkakulong ni na Henny Lopez at yung pagkaka-sequesta uh, ng ABCBN. Mm. Tapos mm. pinakita yung pagtaka sila sa Puerto Bonifacio. Well, uh, ewan, ko sa, ewan ko sa mga sa Philippine Army na min- minalit nila kasi siya. Eh. Minalit nila si Henny Lopez eh. Eh, Henny Lopez was a graduate of the Virginian Military Institute. The next great military school after... Mm. after West Point, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, that guy has military training, hindi lang halata sa kanya. So, uh-huh. Kaya kaya niyang gumapang-gapang sa Port Bonifacio and uh-huh. to do all the theory stuff and everything. Okay. Uh, siya, siya ata nag-guide kay, ano, di ba? Kay Sir Chosmenya palabas. Mm-hmm. So, in a way, pwede mo sabihin propaganda yung kasi number one, it also, uh, it also, uh, sympathize, well, number one, ang producers are cinema. <laughs> number two, mm-hmm. it, uh, it narrates, uh, Uh, in sympathy yung ginawa sa mga Lopez's, di ba? Hmm. So, ngayon, kung baka para doon mga tao yan, baka batuhin niya ng ano, baka batuhin na lang yan ng kamatis or what. <laughs> uh, propaganda, dilawan, di ba? Ganun sabihin nila ngayon. Pero, hmm. yan, 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 yan mga ganyan mga pelikula na hindi na, yan, may mga, may mga ganyan na hindi agad natin napapansin kasi hindi sila action. Pero pag natin, hmm. pag pinipin yung storyline, may pinipin point na enemy, di ba? Hmm. Ilan yun sa mga point, yung halimbawa na may kita natin on our own, uh, local setting. Okay? Yes. Mm. Uh, halata na, well, maybe on some cases, hindi halata the first na propaganda, mm. pero mm. 
si magsilipat mo na mabuti do at pag nagcontemplate ka and added into the fact na kung meron akong pamilya ka sa facts hmm. alam mo pa yeah. <laughs> so dagdag mo pa na pogi pog syempre that's the prime of Richard Gomez di ba yung pogi macho uh-huh. uh-huh. and handsome uh-huh. di ba to talagang ano talagang mapapanood kung ikaw ay average Filipino citizen maybe at time hmm. Mm. Yeah, actually, well, that's a lot of examples, and clearly, it comes from the most exaggerated means an oega, ano, uh, to the point of their explosions and the heroism. That was your contrabida and mukhang contrabida talaga na ano, inis ka talaga sa kanila. So, but there are also sometimes there are forms of another very little. That are very like read between the lines, you know. That's mm. not as pronounced. So there are very various levels of again exaggeration and depiction. So I think well, Borja already started with how to identify propaganda. Number one, uh, it creates black and white distinctions, uh, heroes and villains, mm. friends and enemies. But and then another thing is, um, what's the second one about war reports? It's yeah, about it's about the, yeah ignoring. How would you label that? Uh, I have no idea. Simplification. But- No, 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 not simplification. It's more of uh, the, the art of the spin doctor. You know, you, you ignore things and you overemphasize and you aggrandize certain aspects of it. How would you call that? Mm. Propagandizing? <laughs> <laughs> What aspect of propaganda is that? It's, I, I, uh... I, 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 don't, I don't have a specific concept for it because it's basically two parts. You have cover-ups and you have... Yeah, okay. You, know, you have So in other words, uh, it PR. is... Um... I, I would say part of one of more is embellishment. The number two is yeah, and cover-ups. Um, yeah, cover-ups. Okay, uh, and then I think the usual. Well, Mike already said a lot of things, which is it usually involves the action genre, which hmm. dif- necessitates like fighting between an enemy, clear friend and foe. Eto in bida, eto in contra bida, hmm. and usually it involves in the most obvious ones uniforms, men in uniforms. It, it makes them look cool. <laughs> and so I was wondering, uh, first of all, like, is there a way to, well, number one, um, I want to ask maybe your, uh, maybe your judgment on this, both of you. What are the pros and cons of such propaganda? Because clearly, we have consumed this propaganda, we've enjoyed them, and mm. they have, in a way, helped us appreciate history, politics, mm. drama, action. But at the same time, these are also incomplete and exaggerated parts. So they're not his, they're not a replacement of history per se. Mm. So uh, what is there like? Uh, so do, should we like ban propaganda, or how do we mm. ha- like? Yeah, how is is propaganda necessarily a a good or a bad thing? Mm. So uh, what do you think? No, uh, I think no. Well, for me, before before I give the floor to Mike, I. Uh, I think it's well from the perspective of the viewers themselves. Uh, I could not blame propagandists to do propaganda stuff. It's like blaming a fish for swimming. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's a matter of how we receive it. And if you have an audience who would like, you know, an, an exciting image of history, when in fact history is far more complex and even boring at times, right. then they're more susceptible to believe the values being, you know, being forwarded in such movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think. Whether it, it would be good or bad for citizenship or for critical citizenship, I think we can have a target with this one. Whether it's good or bad for critical citizenship depends on the quality of how citizens would, you know, would appreciate mm-hmm. such things. Because if they are equipped with the capacity to say that no history, to assume that history is far more complex than this, or to know that there are things that are being ignored, then yeah. they're less susceptible to, you know, immediately believe whatever the propagandist is saying mm-hmm. so i think from my perspective i would rather highlight the capacity of citizens to receive such things and in determining whether it's good or bad right uh, but then again we go back to the definition of what propaganda is it's propaganda is about making people do something you know it's making people believe in something or you know and i am i found this very interesting and very you know insightful making people believe that there's something You know that they they can have a certain identity that they can you know see in their uh, you know the, the, the they can be soldiers yeah, cowboys they can be soldiers, yeah to, to have that identity men. yeah, yeah. Uh, regarding that one good or bad propaganda depends on whether it successfully did that you know in, in convincing someone who was not yet like that before watching the damn thing 
when that's not what I mean by good or bad. It's effective. You're describing effectiveness of propaganda. Yeah. But I'm talking about good propaganda less, is effective. That's not what I meant by good or bad. What I mean is, is it morally right or wrong to make propaganda? Or is there an ethical or unethical way of making propaganda? Mm. Or are all propaganda like it's okay to make propaganda as long as you have a good audience? That's the thing. Is, is the question even relevant to propaganda as an issue? Mm. In Munich. So is it, is it even relevant to that issue? Because personally, I, I don't find it relevant to the issue of propaganda, whether it's morally good or bad. Uh, it's a mechanism. It's like asking whether a hammer is good or bad. So, so there's no way we can, how do you say, arrest someone for propagandizing? <laughs> well, they will. Again, we must look at it from a relational perspective. Hmm. You know, in, if we would look at propaganda in relation to the state, then you can determine whether it's good or bad. If we would look at propaganda in relation to citizens, then we can determine whether it's good or bad. But to say that whether propaganda is inherently good or bad, that I think is... Yeah, uh, okay. I don't know. I would like to hear my Mike's thoughts on this one. Yeah, medyo mahirap actually no kung kung inherently good or bad ang propaganda. Kasi some on on some cases talaga, ah, uh, gumagana talaga siya. I mean, that talaga ang may necessity for ano, uh, ah, for it, de ba? Ah, mm. uh, it also gives uh, education to to people, de ba? Or may mm. nagkakapag-inisya na, 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 na discussion. Hmm. Ang nagkakaroon problema kasi no, on on propaganda as as we have all uh, all, all have here is that talaga nagiging casualty ang ano eh nagiging casualty ang uh, ang historical facts no hmm. talaga ma, ma exaggerate talaga siya and I think hindi lang naman yan sakit uh, sakit ng mga films na talagang ginawa for propaganda purposes even those films which are not intended to be propagandic propagandistic <laughs> ay nagiging ganyan din kasi uh, nagkakaroon, dyan na pumapasok kasi yung, ano, yung differences sa creative imagination. Lalo kung malimbawa, uh, lalo kung malimbawa uh, hindi uh, maayos yung pagkukonsulta sa mga dapat kinukonsulta kung accurate ba yung depiction o hindi. Say for example, no, uh, may kita mo yan no, uh, on one end dun sa, uh, dun sa pagkakagawa ng General Luna. Hmm. May mga eksena doon na nauna kesa dun sa hindi dapat mauna. Like uh, I, I, one thing that I particularly uh, say yung ganon is dun sa excedent sa palan, no? Mm. So merong hindi hindi pa sa dun <laughs> dapat sa part na yun eh. Actually, ba dapat mas na una sa unang part na siya eh. Pero maybe because of, of uh, Gerald Tarong's creative imagination, so mm. siguro kaya ganon yung ginawa nilang sequencing. Sa kaya yung ano? Sa kaya yung pinili ni ng lugar for ano for mm. for the definition itself. Ang 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 luwag masadlo sa kaya Ang 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 kwento ng ang, ang talagang kwento ay si Luna ay nakagapang papasok na ng katedral ng Kabanatuan din. Eh. Mm. So doon sa pelikula talagang literal na iniwan siya ng buhay, ba? Mm. Iniwan siya ng buhay. Iniwan siya ng bulag ka sa mismong loob ng kumbento which is mm. I think oneself is also a distortion in itself. Mm. So kaya ambivalent din ako sa uh, sa issue ng propaganda. Maybe lalo I don't know kung it's my bias already now. No, gumagana on one end. Mm. Maybe in 1941, no, on, on, during their time, ano eh, may, 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 may necessity for them, no, to to use that. Lalo, lalo talagang mabigat yung digmahan na gagalap, no. Mm. Pero, again, sabi nga ni, sabi nga ni Anthony kanina, depende sa, ano eh, depende sa gamit, no? depende sa perspective sa tignan. Ngayon, masasawata ba natin ang propaganda? Mahirap. Kasi, mm. uh, uh, assuming walang freedom of expression, kasi yun talaga pinaka main defense dyan eh, mm. na magagawa, di ba, freedom of expression. Assuming wala, kasi, <coughs> sorry, hindi mo mm. kasi maka, hindi mo malilimitahan yung creativity nung mga gumagawa. Mm. So, once creative imagination comes uh, comes in, it's really hard to, you know, it's really hard to police, um, to police um, propaganda. Just hmm. imagine kung uh, pupulisin mo halimbawa yung makagaya ni Stanley Kubrick, di ba? Eh, hmm. uh, they are really, um, they are really notable uh, film personalities, di ba? Hmm. Or halimbawa, papayag, papayag ba sa na Jerry Bruckheimer na nilimitahan mo sila sa kung ano yung pwede mong banggitin? Depende. Or Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ano, yeah. Kung pareho kayo ng pananaw, pero kung hindi, di ba? 
So, uh, uh, talagang may, may element of resistance. And, yes. And, and, no, and yes, we, we humans are very, very creative. Kahit sabihin mo merong, uh, merong paglilimita sa kung ano yung pwede mm. isubat. And to the point na magbumukang propagandistic yung palabas. Mm. Alright. Baka kagawa, baka kagawa ka ng paraan para may, may mapalutang as uh, either as element of resistance mm. or either as as highlighting propaganda. Mm. Say for example, uh, I forget the title of the film, pero this is this film was created in the Philippines during the Japanese co- the Japanese period. Mm. No? Basta ko lang siya kay Dr. Rico Jose. Ang, uh, ang bida ng pelikula ay si Fernando Poe Sr. and mm. doon po siya sa Battle of Bataan. Now, may isang eksena doon. So, technically, ang original intention ng mga Japanese is to really Uh, project themselves as the victors of the Bataan campaign mm-hmm. and they are liberators of the Filipinos no mm-hmm. pero sabi nga pero as I've said earlier di ba oh um, nag-agree yung mga filmmakers nag-agree si FP si Fernando Po Senior mm-hmm. na magpartik doon pero what uh, what's puzzling there is may eksena doon na si Fernando Po Senior ay naka uh, Uh, naka worms eye view siya no naka worms eye view yung camera towards F. Fernando Po Senior na para ang perspective eh tinitingala noong nanonood si Fernando Po Senior. Mm-hmm. Ito yung tumitingala is yung mga hapon. Parang siya yung nasa higher position. <laughs> so, that's the subtle propaganda of ano, o mm. subtle form of resistance na Fernando mm. Po Senior. Again, sa Japanese, oh, sige, game kaming ipromote yung ano nyo, yung tagumpay nyo sa bataan kasi kailangan, number one, pag di, nyo, pag di namin mm-hmm. ginamit, papatayin nyo kami. Number two, mm-hmm. wala kami kakainin. Sige, papayag kami, papagamit kami. Pero hindi ibig sabihin nun eh, Hindi namin i-express na bad trip din kami sa ginagawa ninyo. So that's mm-hmm. one, no? Yung, yung, sabi ni Dr. Jose, yun yung eksena na talagang pinakita na uh, na oo, oh, propagandistic, pero the, the people who are doing it ay hindi din gusto yung ginagawa nila. So, mm-hmm. na, kaya, kaya, na, kapag, kaya nandun yung creativity natin. Nakimutan mm-hmm. uh, ko yung title ng film, eh. Sayang. And I, di, I think, ano yun, eh, one of the classic cases ng, uh, ng propaganda ng mga Japanese dito sa Philippines. So, no? uh, Ito yun, no? Mm. And then, yung, uh, nakita din natin yung ibang mga halimbawa niyan. Halimbawa, doon sa mga gumaganap in itself, di ba? Hindi naman porke dahil gumaganap sila, eh, agaan mm. sila. So, they have to really, ano, later on, their political uh, mm. chances are different compared mm. to what, to whom they are, uh, to whom they are portraying for. I think, ang halimbawa niyan, si Matthew Mudin, mm. sa, ano, sa Full Metal Jacket. na ka, oh sige ginampanan niya yung ano ginagawa siya sa isang very very na na considered as mm. uh, as a propagandistic film by accident in favor of the US military pero anti-military siya no mm. anti-military si Matthew Modine he even turned down Top Gun mm. nevertheless kahit sabihin natin na mag- mag-impose sa limitations over propaganda na pigilan natin ng mga gumagawa niyan mahirap eh kasi yeah. mapalikot ang ating mga pag-iisip kahit uh-huh. sa Subtle, subtle way kaya kaya natin magpasok na mga bagay na magpapromote ng ganito uri ng propaganda over the others. Yeah. Example, just imagine, no? Who who, uh, who would have thought, di ba, na yung, yung, uh, yung Himala, di ba? Hmm. Uh, experimental cinema of the Philippines ang nagproduce is also a critic of the Marcoses. Or limbawa, di ba? Uh, yung Batch 81 hmm. na, ano, na ginawa noong panahon ng batas militar, di ba? na nandoon pa si nandoon pa si da uh, nandoon pa yung kapatid ni Enrile, di ba? Si Carlo mm. Siguro. <coughs> yung nagkakamali, yung kapatid ni Enrile, Carlo Siguro na tuloy. Uh, I'm not sure kung sino yung kapatid ni Enrile yung nandoon eh. Pero, kikita mo, nagawa nila ng paraan na makapagbigay ng kritisismo sa mga Marcoses without even uh, without even mm. themselves uh, putting uh, putting in, uh, being in harm, di ba? Mm. So, ang daming ways on how to inject propaganda how to inject resistance in films. So, it's it's endless. So, the only thing, the, uh, only death can limit people. Oh my <laughs> God. Uh-huh. Well, actually, not only even death. Kung titignan mo mga Marcoses, beyond death, di ba? Yung ibang mga propaganda ng mga Marcoses about about this war, about this war records, di ba? Mm. Ay, paniniwala pa rin natin. At yes. <laughs> pag-iting pa din sa armed forces. regarding resistance to repression uh, it's, it's not a film but a, a symphony actually by Dmitry Shostakovich uh, the Leningrad Symphony 
uh, simply number seven, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was commissioned, it, it was made to boost the morale of Leningrad, which was at that point was still under siege. So it was highly praised, but uh, Sostakovich actually hinted later on that it can be a critique, not only of the war itself, but of the Soviet regime. And yung isang, yung second movement na very mechanical, which was actually his critique of you know, uh, the government trying to you know curb or stump down on uh, musical style at that time. Uh, possible yun, you know, resistance, yeah. may repression. Yeah, mm. that's why I, I found you know, Matt's question whether you know propaganda is inherently good or bad. Uh, okay, I, I would renege on my previous statement. Uh, based on what uh, Mike highlighted. I don't find it irrelevant. I just find it dangerous when you start asking whether it's relevant or not. The problem is, Either and I asked this question bad. precisely because they are asked, well, the Katips and the Made in Malacanang are doing that war saying, panoorin mo to, ito yung totoo, or wag mong panoorin yan dahil puro ano, uh, walang base, basehan yan. So exactly. Mm. That is precisely mm. what they are doing. And uh, now... I needed to ask that question precisely because people might be asking that question. Like, should is it? Uh, should I watch it or should I don't? Should I, should I mm. not? Or can I watch it without being, how you say, poisoned by propaganda? <laughs> and in some ways, perhaps that leads me to the next question, you know? But I, because I think it's important to ask that whether or not it's good or bad. And in some ways, because it's so varied, and I agree with Mike here, because it's so subtle and so varied at times, and at other times over-exaggerated, and sometimes... It's harmless. You know that it's exaggerated, but at other times it ha- it affects you mm. and affects your worldview. All of a sudden, it, uh, movies, art can change the way that you th- see the world. You know, even mm. one. So it can be very potent, but it's very difficult to detect. You know, sometimes it's after the fact. Sometimes it's intended. Na parang oh, gagawa ko ng propaganda film, or minsan nagiging propaganda siya dahil uh, after. <laughs> the fact it was appropriated you know? yeah it was appropriated precisely like yeah, film metal jacket was not a propaganda film but it became even with casablanca i think it became mm. a propaganda film even though it's it wasn't intended so that's the point i think that's an impo- very important distinction that it's can be found in many forms with different degrees of exaggeration etc mm. so then therefore if it's so difficult to delineate and detect how then should we engage? Should we stop people from watching one movie or another? Or how can we, pre- well, how can we as audience goers prepare for uh, watching such films that may be propagandistic? Well, siguro ano, uh, dyan papasok yun, ano eh, dyan papasok yung, yung civic values natin, yung empowerment mm. na citizens. Mm. Eh, kapag nakikita naman kasi nila na talagang uh, it's only out of propaganda, they will be the ones as well to reject it na rin. Oh. Yeah. So, sa so, panahon natin ngayon, yan ang tanong, how can we therefore empower our own people? Di ba? Mm. If, if those who are in what we call as established democracies are also becoming trapped as well in the, in the populist propaganda, the populist agenda fell into populist propaganda, what more sa mga developing democracies na mm kung tinatanat na kung tawagin nila yung mga gaya natin, di ba? Or yung Global South, di ba? Na, mm. na, na sinasabi nila lagi na prone, no? Sa mga ganyang mga bagay. So, dahil sa padakon din ng social media na na talagang may mga, eh, na, na, na nagahalo ang balas na tinalupan, may kita mo. <laughs> uh, sa, not only TikTok, sometimes even in Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, no? Alam mo yun, yun parang, alam mo namang very, very, sorry for the word, very, very stupid nung Reels. Pero, <laughs> You 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 waste your 10 seconds watching that and then <laughs> parang okay parang ano ano ba naman to di ba mga mga bagay <laughs> so you have those kinds of things happening now so it's really a challenge for us educators how to how to us educators on how to build an empowered oh. citizenry with this kind of climate that we have now <laughs> di ba oh. na kahit ako nasi ako as a teacher na ngayon nagigirapan ding uh, sagutin well, I'm, I'm lucky that I'm on a school that uh, that values critical thinking of students. Pero outside of, yeah. of my institution, ba? This, this this whole world that we have here, how can we teach those things up? So, yun yung, yun yung, ano, yun yung, yun yung, uh, sa ngayon, maybe, mahirap sagutin pa. Mm. Pero, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge that is being given to us 
of of the period that we have with me now. Mm. So, dadami na dami pa yan sa mga susunod na taon. And nasa, nasa, maybe it's all also our educators' uh, yeah. responsibility para maturuan din yung ating mga mga estudyante, engage them as well on mm. on becoming uh, on on developing critical thinking and mm. on developing uh, good civic values that will prevent them from falling into propaganda. Mm. Yes, 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 siguro yun. <laughs> Muna. Yeah. Yan, uh, ganda nung pagkakagamit ni, ni Matt ng salitang engage. And I think that uh, I would like to flesh that out further. Kasi when we're confronted with something propagandistic, it's easy to jump into criticism. When in fact, we must first and foremost engage. But I think, what do, what do we mean by engage? Uh, propose ko lang. I don't know if you and Matt would agree with this. But when you say when you engage with something propagandistic or when you engage with a film, you first try to, you know, be relatively objective and try to find out what are the messages being there, what are the important scenes, who are the important characters, and in characterization sila, uh, how are they engaged with each other, you know, uh, what are their prominent statements. So before you criticize, and usually madaling mag, mag, madaling mga husgay mga tao, either they would, you know, either they would swallow it up or they would simply just criticize it for it right. And just dub it as propagandistic. So, yun din ang problema dun eh. Anyway, uh, what about you, Matt? I mean, listening to you guys, I, there are people who are capable of, again, noticing na parang kinagagod niya ako. Ah. <laughs> parang, yun, parang sinasabi, parang, nagagod to. But anyway, even in commercials, parang, it's, it's, they, people have a sense of being insulted. Hmm. So, there is a natural kind of resistance to bad messaging if it's not well done. Uh, I suppose that the, the what I'm trying to go for is those that are very well done that are that actually promote things like, for example, maybe not necessarily political. Sometimes promoting alcoholism or drug use. You know, it's like I, I suppose the only way to. Uh, but with regards to that, um, it's it sounds simple. It, it's not easy to do. But you know, just um, read up afterwards. Like sometimes they make these uh, like the history behind the movie. You know, sometimes oh. in movies like. Henra Luna or um, or whatever film, you know. Hopefully, you don't stop at the film. You go books and cross-checking. And that's the weird, it's difficult, you know. It, uh, I think we said this before, like, as much as possible, have the mind of a scholar, even a little bit, you know, practice. So if, after you watch a movie, if you're, if it still sticks with you, read up. Sorry, totoo ba to? Actually, and some people have actually said, like, for example, The Greatest Showman is about P.T. Barnum, who oh. actually created the, well, who had the most, one of the most famous circuses. Oh. And they love P.T. Barnum because he's played by handsome Hugh Jackman. Oh. But then eventually, when you research who is P.T. Barnum, it's like, oh, he was uh, exploited, like the bearded lady, you know, the oh. freaks in, in the circus. So it's like, so at least if you look behind that, just do a simple search. Double check or triple check. That's the simplest thing, you know. So mm. just, I suppose that's the only thing I can do. Like, skip, yeah, uh, just triple check it, you know. But at the same time, there are also, like, I don't know, like, there's some, like, you can say that one of the most famous and well loved examples, which is a bit trickier, Alexander Hamilton, Hamilton the Musical by Lin Manuel Miranda. Mm. People loved Hamilton, but number one, he was not Mexican, you know, he was well, not Latino, Turkey. he was white. <laughs> Second, George Washington was not African American. You know, he's mm. usually played by someone of color. He is actually, well, of course, we all know he's white. Mm. You know, so uh, what can we say about that? You know, I think, well, it's in a way it's propaganda. Well, it's appropriation and in some ways propagandistic, but it shows is it bad or good propaganda in terms of like is the message that they're trying to sell you in a way acceptable? Because mm. what I can actually get out of that is that it's not. Mm trying to steal a, the story of America or of Alexander mm. Hampton for the colors just per se. Mm. It is in a way imagining that the story of America mm. can include people of color and yeah. immigrants. Yeah. It can be imagined as immigrants. You know, yeah. it's the, the one that have come is not the color of skill. Mm. It's immigrants. Alexander mm. Hamilton may be white, but yeah. he's an immigrant. Yeah. You know, in the story. So, yeah, it may not be for everyone, but, mm. you know, it's, it's part of the exercise. What, yeah. who is this for? Yeah. And what is it trying to say for this? Is it yeah. for everyone, you know? Mm. And what's it trying to say to the yeah. audience? Mm. So, you know, about at the same time. Yeah. 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 No. yeah I think that's uh, Well, telling people to read more, I would second that one. 
but uh, for our listeners who are not keen on reading more, then you can watch more. You know, going back to the example of Hamilton, if after you watch Hamilton, go watch the TV series on John Adams. Then go watch the documentary on Hamilton by uh, PBS, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, the, the, maybe I don't know. Maybe, there are some areas, there are some issues, there are some questions, there are some personalities where there's yeah. actually a treasure trove of cultural artifacts you can mm. indulge in. Looking at looking at the same object from different perspectives. So so yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, uh, I think that's, I think we sell the topic. Any last words, you know, before we go on recommendations? Uh, you have anything to make oh, sing it? Uh, 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 ano, uh, um, days ago, na pa bukas na 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 patingin lang ako sa isang site, sa isang oh. Facebook page na parang kinoo point mm. yung ano, yung ah. Uh, yung uh, yung recent na apology ng uh, ng uh, ng Academy Awards dun sa American Indian yeah. na pinapatay ni Martin Brando, de ba? parang may nagcomment dun na niyan na parang direktamo dun ng mga tao ng na, na mapolitika na masadong ay ng Hollywood kano? <laughs> yeah. then sabi nga niya, etong sample na to ay pinapakita na dati pa talaga yung mapolitika ng Hollywood. so mm. therefore kung feeling natin niyan ay very very propagandistic yung mga ilang mga pelikula pero produce for example, bili malakan yung tips ko na sang kamang uh, perspektiba na spectrum no uh-huh. hindi, hindi, naman po, hindi hindi bago na yung mga bagay yan ginagawa na siya noon pa no uh-huh. and uh, sa panahon natin ngayon na punong-puno tayo ng propaganda no kaliwat kanan ranging from full length films to even uh, TikTok uh, TikTok stories or is or, or social media reels di ba uh-huh. so kinakailangan dating maging critical Mm. wag din consume ng consume ng consume sa ako ano man ang ating mga nakikita mm. at ang isip at gaya ng nabanggit din ng mga kasama namin dito kay timbangin natin kung uh, kung sino ba yung nagsasalita at para saan ba kung bakit sila nagsasalita at ano ang kanilang pinatutungkulan mm. kasi uh, sabi ng result na tayo ay binayaan ng isip upang gamitin sa tama at hindi upang mapaulol sa iba <laughs> Oh. Okay. So in other words, hindi kasalanan o hindi mortal sin ang panonood ng Made in Malacanang. Basta mm. pag-aralan mo, pag basta maniwala kung anong mm. sinasabi yeah. nila. Oo. Yeah. Na parang sige. Uh, so and don't feel guilty if you've watched it. <laughs> Or <laughs> yeah. Matt is telling that to himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you th- uh, again that's a very hearty discussion you know I mean this definitely won't be the last but mm-hmm. yeah there's definitely yes. a lot here so thank you yes. salamat mike salamat borge mat mat may tanong uh, ba may tanong sir oh propaganda ba tayo <laughs> <laughs> i'm anti ganda this <laughs> <laughs> mario sir the alamo you know it's funny propaganda sometimes that's weird i mean it's difficult to say because sometimes propaganda has like a, one clear message with like basically two dimensions yeah so it, this this podcast means that sometimes we change our minds a lot on things so we're mm. not you know we're not trying we're don't, we're only propagandizing thinking okay mm. that thinking is actually interesting to talk about you know or yeah. changing your mind yeah so at least so in the type of propaganda <laughs> except for the <laughs> propagandistic <for> shout out <laughs> sometimes propagandistic i'm thinking of Ah, uh, habol na kwento lang. Yes, so, yes. Yung propaganda na 'yan, yung pagiging yung negation ng propaganda, yung pagiging negatibo ng propaganda. Oh. Pero ako, si Dr. Victor Esto na basa eh. Kung oh. tik daw hindi payagan yung publication ng libro ni Father John Schumacher na The Propaganda Movement. Oo. Oh. Nakita na mga military censor ng Marshall na may word na propaganda. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Marxist oh. propaganda thing, no? Uh-huh. So, uh, Father Schumacher had to really convince Uh, yes. yung mga tao sa Kapaginaldo na propaganda period din na Rizal ang tinutukoy ko dyan at hindi propaganda <laughs> yung video. So, uh-huh. nothing dito because published. Pero, yun na, it was a close call. And I think yung librong yun, no, is one of the uh, canonical books, I think, about the propaganda movement. So, kamuntik-muntik ka ng ginawa ba sa librong yun? Dahil din sa maling itindi ng mga tao tungkol sa kung ano yung propaganda. Just imagine mm. yung propaganda ni Rizal, nagiging negatibo rin ng tingin because of propaganda too. <laughs> that's very, I think that's I actually forgot to mention, and thank you for reminding me that you know the propaganda is a tool, and it depends how you use it. You know, and it's a tool for revolution. Like we wouldn't have a nation if it weren't for propaganda. Uh, Noli and El, and El Fili are both, in a way, forms of propaganda, a continuation. La Solidaridad was a form of yes. propaganda. Mm. So again, it can be used for certain means. You know, 
uh, just Mayans, others unjust. So I suppose once we identify those um, those ends or those messages, then we can judge. But propaganda mm. itself is not necessarily a bad or good thing. In fact, it moves mm. history. You know, it's a political tool, but good or for bad, that depends. Yeah. You know, you have to identify who the persons behind yeah. them are, what are the goals behind them. And yeah. speaking of which, let us move on to recommendations. I suppose let's make that the first recommendation because as the PI podcast is partnering with the Ateneo de Manila University Press uh, and has given us a uh, co discount code for those if you want to buy books from them in Shopee. So uh, some of the books uh, that we prom we consistently promote uh, Ateneo books and one of them of course is The Propaganda Movement by Father Joel Schumacher, mm. uh, the, one of the late great uh, Jesuit historians that made a very detailed account again of the propaganda movement who, which preceded and made it in a way paved the way for the Philippine Revolution. So that's with Rizal and Marcelo Del Pilar and Luciano Lopez Haina uh, consistently wrote for the sake of the nation and advocating it in Spain. Hmm. And another uh, thing I personally want to add, um, promote, which is also available in the Ateneo Press is a book by Reynaldo Eleto called Knowledge and Pacification on the U.S. Conquest and the Writing of Philippine History. Where, yes, mm -hmm. the writing of Philippine History has done, in a way, on our behalf by Americans, sometimes even by Filipinos, but perhaps for American ends. So, in a way, Eleto kind of tries to um, question these forms mm -hmm. of history writing, you know, if, mm -hmm. for the sake of, again, pacification. Uh, for and to benefit uh, the United States empire, imperial project at this moment, and perhaps one that is not at the New Press. I guess, again, this is my personal uh, recommendation. I think it's a video which can. Uh, this one, it's called "One Marvelous Scene" by Just Right, which talks about you know military propaganda in Marvel movies, in particular, focusing on Captain America. Captain America, of course, began as as a propaganda mascot, promoting the. Uh, war effort for people to either enlist mm. or to punch Hitler and of maybe if not if you can't enlist mm. invest or like in buying war bonds even children can actually invest in war bonds you know so if you mm. see Captain America in fact the if you watch the movies in you know, the first Avenger it actually is a tongue in cheek saying that even Steve Rogers himself uh, actually acts as a propaganda you know, tool, mm. you know, so, and even the end credits, which looks at, like propaganda posters, which is actually mm. great. So it's part of it, but also if you look, watch the first Avenger to Winter Soldier and Civil War, you'd notice that it actually becomes more morally gray. So it even, mm. what do you call this, uh, questions that propaganda, uh, Captain America as a propaganda, but eventually he became a symbol of the critique of his own propaganda. Mm. So that's interesting. So that's my recommendations. Um, Borg, do you have recommendations? Well, again, as I've said, uh, I haven't said it yet, but again, I think propaganda is one of the most dangerous mirrors that we have as political entities. We we are what we watch in relation to propaganda. But uh, again, just to elaborate on what propaganda is regarding analysis, uh, I'm recommending what the references that I pro pro provided earlier on, which is uh, first, Propaganda and Persuasion by Gart Jovet and uh, Victoria O'Donnell. So this is a good study trying to distinguish persuasion, propaganda. So rhetoric would be there as well. What are the contents of propaganda? Uh, what are the indicators of propaganda? What are the relationships of propaganda with psychological warfare and so on and so forth? So I'm recommending that uh, to our readers, uh, to our listeners here. Uh, what else? Also defining propaganda, a psychoanalytic perspective by Alexander Laskin. Uh, but then again, I would also recommend any works by uh, Eric Fromm, especially Escape from Freedom, uh, regarding attaching yourself to something greater simply because society had made you so thoroughly and th utterly powerless and small. But uh, but yeah, those are my two reading <laughs> reading recommendations for this one. But, you know, for film, something to watch about propaganda, watch Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. Oh! So, yeah. That's basically about a kid who consumed propaganda and tried to write propaganda, you know, you the know book about film. Jews. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> end of the day, it is a lesson that reality would always be far more complex than whatever we watch. Maybe just historical films or just plain propagandistic pieces of shit. But uh, reality would always be far more complex. And 
again going back we are what we watch and uh, yes, yes. again our... I thought you can recommend Renly Rifen start trying the wheel but about what would Jojo Rabbit that's yeah, I changed my mind contemporary people, people, wow people, people, people would people could watch Triumph of the Will I I like watching Triumph of the Will for some reason <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, but yeah Jojo but Rabbit it's more you know public friendly you know like Bambata yan eh. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's good. Yeah. Thank you for it. Uh, Mike, you you have anything to recommend? Yes. Ah, uh, siguro ano? Um, not on the books, but more on films, alam para mas makita niya sample sa propaganda. Mm-hmm. Siguro mas magtutun na. Ah, uh, well, maybe because World War II is one of my favorite topics, salaga. Kaya mm-hmm. para ito umiikot yung mga recommendations. So kasi yung mga classic examples sa daga to eh. Of course, number uh, una 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 sa lahat is yung you Nazi spy ng Three Stooges. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> literally gold no yeah. sample uh, Shirley Larry and Mo no si Mo naging uh, nagpinapako with Mo parodizing Hitler yeah <laughs> and yung Yiddish uh, yung Ger- akala mo German Yiddish pala yung sinasabi niya <laughs> the lines no I uh, got by the way I did childhood no? okay, childhood watch ko yan sa Studio 23 dati mm. then uh, you have as well the classic The Dictator the Charlie Chaplin mm. yes so this one I think it's enough uh, to to dissipate the mga allegations ng anti ng uh, na komunista si Chaplin, de ba? In making uh, that's why he didn't uh, mobilize for war no? in in those past two wars na uh, na 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 Nandoon din yung Hermits Here ng Merry Melodies. So, si Bugs Bunny, y- ito yung meme na si Bugs Bunny ay mukhang si Stalin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Nagsak sa akin yun eh, na pag ano, na pag bukas si Hitler nung, ano, noong bag, nung sako, pag tingin yung sako eh, tumigaw siya tapos tumakbo, tapos biglang nooba si, ano, biglang nooba <laughs> si Bugs Bunny na, uh, na, na kamukha, kamukha siya ni Joseph Stalin. <laughs> ito na napunod ko, ano yung pag paglabas ni ano paglabas ni uh, ni Bugs kuha ano tumugtog yung ano tumugtog yung antin ng Soviet Union tan tan <laughs> <laughs> so this one then of course you have Donald Duck this is this is another classic we have we watch this even in our class in college yung Der Führer space si mm. yung si Donald Duck ay trabahador sa Nazi Germany na uh, he uh, he ended up with uh, I am a proud citizen of the United States of America yung mga ganon, no <laughs> then uh ito full length film to uh yung this is the army ito yung ano uh, din this is the army Mr. Jones uh, room oh, wow. no the room Jones that which I heard for the first time sa Baby's Day Out kaya pala sabi ko kaya pala kinakantay ng mga matatang na sundalo kasi that was uh, yung film na uso nung panahon nila oh. also from that film by the way like group and film siya in a way no si Irving Berlin atang tumira ng mga kanta dun eh kaya hmm. very very classic no it's one I think it's one of the uh, one of the classic uh, songs sa US no then you have as well Victory Through Air Power di Walt Disney just imagine the Walt Disney Pictures would would produce films like this. No, mm-hmm. uh, it also promotes uh, the U.S. Army Air Force at the time. Kaya mm-hmm. mapapansin, if you are to observe, no, karamihan na mga uh, World War II air units, no, ng both U.S. Navy and both U.S. Air Force, ay ang mga caricatures nila is parang hawig ng style sa Walt Disney. It's because the mm-hmm. Walt Disney ang ang Walt Disney Pictures sa pagdesign ng mga aviation squad ng mga uh, ng mga insignia sa mga aviation squadrons no mm. and some of them even uh, even exist until today no uh this world war to make it uh, one of the classic examples i think is yung logo ng U- ng US Navy Seals parang Walt Disney at ang tumulong sa pagdesign noon kaya yung caricature niya kamukhang kamukha ng style ng Walt Disney talaga <laughs> so yeah, no ilan <laughs> Ah, oh, th- thank you. That's a lot, actually. Yep, Some yep, of them yep. are very short, so you can see them in YouTube. We'll put the links in the description yeah. below. Yeah. Oh, before I forget, I forgot to say the code, you know, so for the Anthony Books from the Anthony Press, which, again, is the Publisher of the Year Award, you know, um, you can encode the code for Shopee at, at A-T-E-N-P-I-P-O-D. That's at the P-Pod. A-T-E-N-P-I-P-O-D. So you can get put that code in in Shopee for any of uh, Ateneo Press books. Mm. You'd get a 20% discount. So yes, thank you. So yes, 
So, um, thank you very much, Mike. Again, um, please follow him. We're gonna put the his links on the description as well for Project Taisai. And all. You want to promote anything else? Uh, anything that you uh, you want to say to listeners that promote or read or you know? So, ayun, your... tama, promote lang ulit ng page namin, Project Taisai, sa Project Bin. Yes. Bin. <laughs> uh, you Project? On Facebook. Yes. On Instagram and on Twitter. Okay. So yeah, thank you very much. And that has been another ep- yeah, another episode on PI Podcast for our History Month special. So you yes, may uh, find uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh you may find us on YouTube, Anchor, and Spotify. If you have a question, suggestion, or reaction, please comment on our our Facebook or YouTube or send us an email at PI Podcast PH at gmail.com. But until the next episode, magandang gabi, mga kapiyay.